Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, hey, what's up with that fake voice? I don't know. It's supposed to be, this is the Apostate Prophet. <laughs> 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 no, I'm trying to be a, a tough man now because it's like the, the new thing right now. You know, everybody respects you when you are, when you talk like this with a fake voice. And hey. you also have a bunch of women that you have as girlfriends at home and who do online pornography for you and then you convert to islam and everybody loves you for it yeah uh, hey I, I was making fun of uh, i was hanging out with uh ip here uh, down in texas and uh i was making fun of him for his voice always sounding like he's going through puberty but then he started doing a deep <laughs> voice but i was like that show him your deep voice uh, ip my deep voice i mean this the one that's hard <laughs> i have to strain my uh voice on doesn't best i can do Make, makes my voice crack even more wow. actually if i do that yeah I feel like I'm I feel like I'm getting more manly just hanging out with these awesome studs and their deep voices. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, you have a um is you have a condition, right? That makes your voice oh, yeah. crack. Yeah. Yeah, I I've, I've got my voice evaluated and they like they, they put like one of those cameras like down your nose and look at it and she's like, "No, everything's fine. You just you just suck." It's like your voice <laughs> is just going to crack for the rest of your life. It's nothing you can do about it. So, and that's that like it. uh what were you, what were you, you and Daniel were talking about uh precocious puberty in your debate um yeah. they have uh, yours is like never-ending puberty <laughs> yeah you know, i was it's trying like to go your voice cracked right when you were talking permanent, about, uh, permanent puberty <laughs> yeah. yeah it happens all the time nothing i can do about it I just, I just i just own it that's all uh yeah so i i'm late uh Normally, I'm always late for no reason, but this time I have a justification, a good reason to be late. Uh, that's why I'm later than usual. Um, so my, my, my little two-year-old kid was uh, has been sick the whole day. He's been vomiting and uh, trying to go to the bathroom and has, has a trouble. We tried everything, and in the end, he finally did it, and then he felt like very sleepy and drowsy and uh, needy and all that. So I had to take care of him and then come here, despite being two years old he is still a a child and not an adult although as we have recently learned in the debate between between inspiring philosophy and Daniel Kikichu uh, a child can be an adult and can be ready for sex as early as uh five years four years three years and maybe even 11 months so yeah IP I P and A P. We we all gotta marry our kids off on the super young, or or the they 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 might go they might go they might run to the closet and masturbate if we're not careful. And so it's better to marry them better to marry them off on the young. Oh boy, oh boy, that's that's just incredible. That's, there, there, yeah, that's it. Masturbation is so much worse to a child than being forced into a marriage where they're gonna be abused and have psychological damage. Yeah. It's hey. so weird to me. He brings up these these things like, uh, oh, young teenagers, they're getting uncontrollable urges and they're sexting, they're, te they're mes messaging nude pictures to each other. And this is all very bad. Therefore, we should marry them to 25-year-old men. Like, <laughs> it's, it's also kind of weird because he thinks it would like solve porn. But like, like <laughs> studies have shown that like married couples sometimes struggle with porn. So like... <clears throat> Just because you marry them off doesn't mean that people are going to stop watching porn. I mean, like, you want to get rid of porn, you got to change the culture. You can't yeah. just yeah. marry and then, people and then, off. And then, and then, like, with his mindset, with, uh, you know, if people have desires, you have to give them an outlet to satisfy those particular desires. Uh, who's going to want to marry a five year old girl? Some freaking pedophile who's looking at the pictures, right? So you got to go find an actual pedophile to marry your five-year-old daughter, and then, of course, the mm. pedophile his uh, his desires are uh, are satisfied, and of course, your five-year-old, uh, I guess, in Daniel's oh, mind, those, cares. Those, 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 yeah, nobody cares about her. He just um, I don't know if you if you've seen it, David, but uh, there was a video going around that I just came across yesterday. A, a, another Muslim actually shared that video of uh, Daniel Hikikichu mocking little girls in Afghanistan who are uh, who cannot go to school anymore you know there's an interview of those girls going to school and then being banned from entering the school because of the Taliban now and they are crying and Daniel Kikichu posts a voice recording on telegram to mock the little girls and says stuff like oh I can't go to school in, in fact I should play that just to show how disgusting he's yeah but by the way as you're if you're pulling that up uh, th think about think about how these things are connected right um you could, and this is the the position of someone like Yasser Qadi, 
and uh, Jonathan Brown and so on, they acknowledge that Aisha was nine when Muhammad had sex with her. They acknowledge that kind of thing. And these are Muslim scholars. Uh, but they'll point out that, that well, times were different back then. You didn't, girls didn't, you know, go to a certain number of years of school and then to college and so on. They didn't do all this stuff. And therefore, there was nothing for the girls to do. And so they should, they might as well go ahead and get married young. But they point out, well, the world has changed. It's not like that anymore. Now, girls, girls, you know, go to school and decide what they want to do. And they have all these decisions to make before they need to be thinking about marriage. So they're saying it was okay then, but yes, it would be different now because we live in a different world where things are different. Uh, but notice if, if they if they have any sort of valid point from an Islamic perspective, you've got Daniel and the Taliban trying to reverse <laughs> that. Well, let's destroy the concept of girls going to school, make it so that they have absolutely nothing to do. And that way no one's gonna complain when we marry them when they're five and six and seven, because there's nothing else for the girls to do. So they're actually, in a strange way, they're actually granting that there's a connection, that there's a reason for not marrying young girls now, and they want to destroy those reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a there's a study called Association of Adult Depression with Educational Attainment, Aspirations and Expectations, which just shows that when you have low educational aspirations and low education, it's associated with higher rates of depression. Uh, so, yeah, education would be good for girls because uh, it's better for their mental health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me let me uh, play this. So this is this was posted by this guy called uh, Knowledge North, who is the same traditionalist Salafi Muslim guy who actually uh, was very critical of Ali Dawa and how he yeah he was working when he, he was working with uh uh Sajid Slipham yeah, yeah Sajid Sajid yeah. they were they were tag teaming some stuff yeah, yeah this guy is a is an interesting guy I don't want to praise him very much now so that people don't attack him for being praised by an ex-Muslim enemy of Islam <laughs> but uh so here is a he put this together and I hope it is not too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't go to school. Oh. Oh, why can't they let me go to school like they do in America and Europe? I can't go to school. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is our dear friend Daniel Hikikachu who reacts to girls who can't go to school in uh, in Taliban Afghanistan, Muslim girls, and he just as a grown adult mocks those girls. Yeah, yeah that's got that's some sexist. Real, got some real so winners. Got some real winners here. Yeah, yeah. I just I've been seeing Muslims on Twitter that have been saying like if I wanted if I wanted to hire someone to make Islam look bad, they could not have done a good as job as Daniel Hakikichu. I know, I know. People are saying that he's uh much better than me in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as an enemy of Islam. And and I agree. I agree actually. I well, can't and, I can't be as good as him. And and notice uh like the, the, there, there are two reasons for praising Daniel. One, he's really sticking to Islam, so you can give him that credibility here. He's really, really sticking to his guns on Islam. And on the other hand, it's he's really doing more than just about anyone else to expose the sick, the sick nature of Islam. So it's like the more someone sticks to his guns on Islam, the better he is at exposing at exposing it and and that should muslims who are watching that should be troubling to you like the more someone is the more honest someone is about your religion the more freak freakishly horrifying it is to everyone in the entire world that's true that is true but anyway uh enough about the crazy people Let's move on to other crazy people. Uh, but first off, Emmanuel Fry said the mocking could have been funny at least. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was just cringe. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, I make it know. make it funny. It was like when Andrew Tate made that video making fun of Greta Thunberg. But like I know, her, like her 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 tweet was funnier than her than his entire video. And it's like you're trying to you're trying to act like you owned her and she's funnier than you. 
and then he he he, he got back. It was like what she said doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so stupid. So, <laughs> Muslim, some Muslims need to hire some comedy writers. I had one guy reply to me, and he called me Mike Myers. You guys get it? Because there's yeah. a famous guy named Mike Myers. My name is Mike. Oh, oh man, classic. Wow. Hey. Oh boy. Hey, they, they could uh, they could put you in a Michael Myers mask and call you Michael Myers. Oh, oh burn! Whoa. Burn! <laughs> you got wow. Halloweened. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, what are we dealing with here? Feminist okay. sisters who love. Um. So let's let's bring this up here. Thank you, Hassan Corner, for the oh, super chat. I really appreciate it. And let's look into this. So we are talking about a case where um, these Muslim apologists are sitting together and basically arguing in favor of taking multiple wives after having a first wife behind the back of the first wife. So uh, the first wife, does, uh, you are married to a, to a regular woman, you have children, and without her knowledge, you go and uh, marry other wives. She knows nothing about it. She thinks you just they are doing different things. Meanwhile, you have a different you have different families, different wives, and she knows nothing about. And this is okay according to Islam, according to these people. That's what they are saying. So um, let's look at that. Feminist sisters who love their sisters, who will die for their sisters, will take a bullet for their sisters, but will not share their husbands for their sisters. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it's, dare they. It's so, so cringe to even like, like if you loved me, you'd share me with your friends, honey. What's wrong <laughs> with you? It's like, don't you love me? Don't you love them? They really want to have sex with me. Devin, you've been talking about that with them. I hey, thought you loved me. Did, did you guys see did you guys see that video of that uh, young Muslim girl? And I think it was on TikTok or something. She was actually telling other she's clearly been conditioned oh yeah like that's what they, I, that's I, that's what they're doing in all of this they're conditioning women to believe that the the more open they are to bringing their their girlfriends home to their husbands the, the better wives they are and the better they are in the eyes of islam they're conditioning these girls and now the girls are actually going out and doing it but there was that girl on like tiktok or something she was yeah. saying your life will change as soon as you start bringing your girlfriends home for your husband to enjoy your life will get better and i'm like yeah lots of got lots of guys are gonna <laughs> love you for they're gonna say man i got the I best a... wife i got the best wife in the world bringing me home all her friends they're, they're, they are you 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 will find guys who really, really love having a a wife like that. But, but I the idea, that, the idea, on. yeah, the idea. Oh, that that, that, is, that girl on uh, that woman on TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah the I idea. Of, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's a uh, so that that's a uh, that's the direction things are heading in, and and that yeah, you, yeah, you, did, uh, back, you you will impress your husband like that, but uh, doesn't mean it's a it's a good idea. Back in January, I did a response to her, and then a bunch of Muslim men got mad at me for that, and so. <laughs> I, I cited some meta analyses and then they tried to come back because they started taking them out of context. And I had to like respond by pointing out, you guys don't know what the Bible says and you guys are getting these studies blatantly wrong across the board. And it was just like wild to watch them desperately try to defend something that, is, that has been proven in sociological studies to cause, to cause massive harm to women. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's one of those, one of those women who like to um, build a community of men who really want women to do to say stuff that men like and she appeals to that audience it, that's just it's just cringy very very cringy hey yo ap ap you got a comment here someone said uh, i married a muslim and did not know he already had two wives i asked if he practiced or believed in polygamy he lied as soon as i found out i quickly annulled the non-marriage wow. so these are yeah these are people who are signing up for you, you go get your your Islamic marriage, even though it's not official in the eyes of the state, because you you know you have your one marriage that's official that you're officially married, as far as the state is concerned, and then you get your uh, your extra marriages on the side, um, and then yeah, not all women are aware of this when they're signing on. Yeah. Anyway, so women think they 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 love they show love, but then they are unable to share their husband. It's just terrible. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your spouse you can lie to your uh, your spouse but can, can they lie in the context of for example if one says oh, i sense that you've got a second wife can he says can I he say no i don't 
Yes, you can. You can see that. You can see that. Yes, I, I possibly believe this what? is uh, uh, the prophet said you can do it. It, this, it's funny, right? He, I mean, you, you can be, you can lie to your to the closest uh, person in your in your life, to the to your, your wife at home. You can just you can lie to her about something so significant. That's okay. It's all right. It's Islam, man. My my favorite reaction is the women going, "Wait, what? Wait, what? Like, <laughs> they, like they're just dumbfounded. This is actually the, the case." Like, I find it actually interesting that they made this what? show with uh, women said you can do it. sitting there and showing their face. I think I yeah, don't know. Absolutely. I was a little surprised. I, I, yeah, look at the look at the gosh, look at this squad here. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what this re, you know what this reminds me of. It reminds me of when Hijab was at Speaker's Corner saying uh, saying that if you just read the Quran, you'll get the indication that you can have sex with a five year old. And there are all these women standing around like, yeah, what? yeah. Wait, what? What did you say? It's like, ladies, how are you? How are you just now learning all of this? We were saying this fifteen years ago, and and all your dais called us liars. Now they're telling you to your faces, and you guys are all shocked. The one on the left looks like she doesn't really want to be there, and the third one looks very disturbed. But I don't know. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. I, who are these people? How did this even come into existence? I don't understand. Yeah, are these um, like are they, are these like randomly selected women from the mosque? Or are these these guys' wives or who who I don't I don't know who these. I don't women think are. they're I don't think they're their wives. I think it's just like a, uh, a hey, talk between hey, Muslim hey, men and women. Hey, maybe these maybe these are the candidates for like second Wait, second bro. second wives <laughs> secret second oh, God. secret second wives. Wait a minute. So this this is called the bitter truth show. And this is something that Ali Dawa himself created and hosts. I'm completely unaware of this. And uh, there are so far two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven episodes of them just inviting women and having them talk to men and then say all these horrible things to them. Uh, mm -hmm. What in the world is... I wasn't even aware of that aspect here. So this is... <laughs> Ali hey. Dawa's own creation, a podcast of a show called The Bitter Truth Show. Oh, this is going to be a gold mine, man. If they're going what this the <laughs> world, man. Hey, hey, what, why do they keep saying truth instead of in, instead of hawk? Doesn't the hawk sound like this could be called? He, he, he had one chance to name his show The Harsh Hawk, and he didn't do it, man. <laughs> the Harsh, the Harsh Hawk. What? what? <laughs> to my new I, show, The Harsh Hawk, where we're going to show <laughs> you women that you goes, you need to be cool with us getting the secret secret wives and the secret sex slaves. And as a brother, uh, uh, Daniel Hakikachu, he's pointing out, it does not matter as long as she reaches precocious puberty at 11 months, then we <laughs> can have her as the sex slave or the secret second, third, fourth wife, you know? You are bringing up an important point, which is that Dan Hikikichu said these things publicly now, and uh, Aledawa likes to uh, suck up to Dan Hikikichu, uh probably because of Dan Hikikichu's fight with Sajid Lipham. And now uh, maybe this will encourage him and others to look for younger wives. Stay tuned. Yeah. Find out That's, more hey, soon. So, can we, so, can we contact to prevent that? <laughs> Yeah. So, someone said that someone said he should call the show Ali Dawa's Playhouse of Insanity. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's just it's ridiculous, man. I just go ahead. Oh, I just find it ironic that the show is called The Bitter Truth, and they're telling, "No, no, we can lie all we want. It's fine." Like that is funny. And and the bitter truth is only um, bitter to women, of course. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. uh, it is established by Ali Dawa, and they are just there to tell women the bitter truth. And, 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 by, and by the way, ladies, make sure you don't tell anything we're discussing to our wives, or they might get in on it. They might know. They might know what's going on. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the prophet said you can do it, and we're proud of that. Uh, why, so, why, why that? It doesn't have to be white. It can be a black line. If someone does this and they get caught, for example. Or something happens, or yeah, I mean, or, he, or she just asks him, "Where were you last night?" Yeah, but even that, he can lie. The man can do it. It's up to the man. No woman can take that right amount away from the man. Okay. Aside from Al Islam, I think my integrity, my dignity, my 
you know, who I am as a person. Oh, wait a minute. There will be a harsh response to this, I guess. The way she started it, aside from Islam. Yeah, that, that was that was a bad note saying, aside from Islam. That it's was like, a terrible yeah. move. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you completely ignore that we're entirely justified in Islam for doing this, it would be wrong. But yeah. we're not talking about that. We're not talking about in some fantasy world. We're talking about Islam here. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. I would think it's so disrespectful mm -hmm. for my husband yeah. to go and marry somebody else Good secretly. Point. That yeah. to me is cheating. It's like a slap Even in if face. it is Islamically yeah. correct. This, this idea of aside Islam, we're Muslims. There is no aside Islam in this discussion. But I'm speaking to a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So there is no aside Islam here. The true religion, which I'm now expected as a Muslim man to follow, is not the religion of Al Islam, it's the religion of women's feelings. I'm not going to do this. So I'm saying now we we'll go back to the book and the sunnah. What exactly <laughs> Wait, what is, is a secret marriage? It is not made public. It's not publicized. So the point is... Oh boy. Uh, anything anyone wants to say about this whole thing so far? Well, well as you might expect, uh, research does show that people prefer mates or spouses that are truthful. Uh, personality and mate preference, five factors in mate selection and marital satisfaction shows that, of course, anyone like will, will prefer a mate that has higher levels of agreeableness. And agreeableness is one of the five big personality traits, uh, which are openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, acronym OCEAN. And agreeableness is a trait that aligns with trust, honesty, altruism. So like he's basically saying to the whole world that, I make a bad spouse. I make a bad husband because I have low levels of agreeableness. So I'm going to lie uh, to, to my, my spouse and go out and cheat on her. Uh, that's very, that's very interesting to me, which is um, so many Muslim apologists, Daniel Kikachu, and um, I would say also maybe Mohammed Hijab and the others, they like to talk about uh, social cohesion, which uh, Daniel Kikachu likes, likes to reference and how... Uh, you know, you need to get rid of stuff that destroys a society and, uh, you know, lowers trust and, you know, atheism, apostasy and this and that. But then here are these men saying it is entirely justified and OK in Islam, maybe even good, that they lie to their to their wives. Now, that aspect. So that that doesn't look like cohesion within the family, let alone cohesion in society. And well, also another aspect is, think about it. These guys are ready to lie about their their lives to the core of their mm -hmm. family. How what do you how do you think? Do you think you can trust them as somebody who is an outsider? Yeah. Well, I mean, they they claim they want social cohesion and orderly society, but I mean, research shows polygamy does lead to more political instability. Because if like the top 10%, the wealthy are taking more women, uh, the bottom 30% tend to be single. And that leads to them joining militant groups, fighting back because they have all these, this testosterone, they can't have a wife to, you know, settle down with a family. So they join these type of groups. And th this notion that I've seen some Muslims say, well, there's more women than men. So there's more women to go around. It's just blatantly false. That's completely uh, current false. Yeah, there's 102 men per 100 of women in the world. And that's historical. To quote Bart Ehrman, this is what Bart, Bart Ehrman says in his lecture, Lost Gospel on Judas Discovered, Part 2. He says, in the ancient world, except in times of real serious war, men outnumbered women all the time. Men outnumbered women all the time because so many women died in childbirth. And so there were always more men than women, which, every, which means every man could not be married. So there's never been any sort of practical you know, practical reason to be polygamous in society. There's never been an, except in very rare, very rare instances, multiple women to go around. So this is just ridiculous. I have to say something here. Uh, Bart Ehrman as a source would have been very popular a year or two ago <laughs> to, to Muslims, but ever since, <laughs> ever since he publicly <laughs> disagreed with Islam and even, uh, you know, kind of mockingly rejected uh, its claims and also said that the Quran cannot be trusted in terms of history and Jesus. Muslims don't like him anymore. So yeah. <laughs> invalid source. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they didn't like him anymore. Okay. I guess all my sources are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what 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 makes me uh what surprises me is 
I wonder if these let me bring this back. I wonder if these guys have got backlash because of this whole show so far because <clears throat> they, they have women here who are not appropriately covered according <gasps> to their expectations. And right. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of Muslims, traditionalist Muslims, have a problem with that. And these guys are just sitting here and just directly looking at them and interacting with them and zooming in on their faces and playing their and they, showing their yeah. hair yeah these dudes aren't lowering their gazes at all There's yeah women are sitting here but i guess it's like oh it's worth it though as long as we educate these women and make them uh turn them into good good islamic girls who don't question what we say then we're good maybe it's all that's worth, the logic it's it's worth it. like yeah it's like going to the doctor and taking her clothes <clears throat> off you know it serves mm -hmm. a purpose so mm -hmm. yeah i'm yeah. <laughs> to show you what i was talking about <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> hey, Zub, would you like to? Oh, you know, I love to. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. So the point is this, you know, let me be real, yeah? If you love your, if you've got a good husband, he comes and he says, I want a second wife, all hell breaks loose. And then we blame this man. Yeah, but why are you keeping it a secret? What else should he do? And so they. <laughs> what logic? Wow. <laughs> You could apply the same logic to a lot of things in the world that are very, yeah. Think very about, terrible, very think, about think about this. I want to bang this other girl. It, besides my wife, I want to bang this other girl, and then my wife, she's getting upset about it. How could you? <laughs> how could, how, I know that he's gonna get accepted, uh, get upset about it. So of course I was gonna lie. How can you blame me? <laughs> so that's what that's what these guys are actually saying, right? Like we want to. I married you, but I wanna I wanna go have sex with other women that I'm gonna Islamically married on the side. And I know you're gonna be upset about that. That's why I lie to your face. Why would you get mad about that? Why would you get it's 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 your fault. It's your fault for getting upset that I want other women. <laughs> shame, be fair, on, shame on you. Shame on you. Well, to I'm be fair, uh every room where Alidawa is present, he's uh, probably the least intelligent in the room so uh, so that, that just came from him so i'm, I'm like yeah are play. these guys polygamous like do they do you think they have other wives like publicly i think no mm. Th this is this, so this is a way this is a way of so gently breaking it <laughs> breaking the news <laughs> yeah. oh you know hypothetically hypothetically <laughs> maybe in, in the if a situation arose you know Wow. So hey, I'm wondering hey, now. Hey, wife, did you watch that show? Uh, wh what does you think about that? <laughs> uh, uh, are you a good wife, like the kind that we're describing? Or is you one of them wives who will be upset? Uh, it's funny that your Ali Dawa sounds like sounds a little bit like uh, Ali G in the way he. he well, that's how I think of him. I mean, you know. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's deliberate, I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. They perform the marriage in somebody's house and there are two witnesses present and nobody knows about this. When the Prophet, he, he kept a secret from some of his wives. Some scholars, I'm not going to go into detail, but some scholars actually... Oh, wait. Connected that's with Mary the Copt. With Maria the Copt to lying the cop, yeah. for three things. This is funny. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when we bring, the, bring up this issue where Muhammad was... Uh, lied to his wife and was caught having uh, sex with his slave girl in his mm -hmm. wife's house. Mm -hmm. And then they were angry at him. And then uh, he said he will not do it again. And then Allah sent a revelation and said, oh. no, you are allowed to do whatever you want. Do never <laughs> forbid yourself from doing such things. A lot of Muslims, when we bring this up, say, well, no, there are different interpretations and this might just be about eating honey. He was not supposed to eat honey and he ate honey and that's why they got mad. And he said, I will <laughs> never eat honey again. But then Allah sent a revelation down and said, you are allowed to eat honey. So, uh, <laughs> but this guy is here uh, reiterating that this is actually about about him having sex with, with his slave girl. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, and just... I mean, that's one of those situations where you can read the Quran verse and then read their explanations and you could tell which is obviously the correct explanation for anyone for, for anyone who's new to this. Right. You have the opening verses of Surah 66 of the Quran, which are talking about um, Muhammad has made an oath to his wives and Allah's telling him, hey, you, it's OK to break that oath you made to your wives. 
And then, so the question is, what's this about? You got two competing stories. One is Muhammad got caught in in the bed of Hafsa, his wife, his wife Hafsa, with his slave girl Mary the Copt, while Hafsa is out running some errands. She comes back early, catches him in bed with his uh, his sex slave, and he's like, "Please don't tell Aisha. Please don't tell Aisha. She's gonna complain. I'm gonna look bad." And and then Hafsa blabs it to everyone, and then it's this big ordeal and so on. But then you have this competing story where his wives are complaining that he smelled like honey, <laughs> like he was eating this he was eating this honey and they were mad about it. And so they had this big dispute over there. It's like, OK, what's the what's the real story behind this that was so embarrassing? Is, is it really about honey? The funny thing is, honey, honey sounds like, a, you know, a, a comparison for yeah. The, se- yeah, yeah, yeah. the second yeah. one sounds, sounds like, like something. Episode for- of, yeah. The second one sounds like an episode of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Yeah. They caught eating honey. No, I wasn't eating honey. <laughs> Stop lying, Christopher hey. Robin. I don't even remember. I don't, remember, I don't even remember what he sounds like. Was... No, Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gets funnier the more you think about that. <laughs> Someone should do a cartoon of that honey episode. And he's when he like they come up to him like the characters from Winnie the Pooh come up yeah. to him and they're like, Muhammad, are you eating our honey? <laughs> and, and by, by the way, everyone, look, look at look at these uh, look at these verses. So you have uh, you have you you can read the the historical background in Tafsir Jalalain. You have hadiths about this being uh, connected to uh, Mary the Copt. But look at it, O Prophet, why did you prohibit? So the historical background is Muhammad gets caught. Uh, he tells he tells uh, Hafsa keep her keep her mouth shut because he doesn't want his wives complaining. His wives complain, "Hey, what are you doing? I mean, you're literally having sex with your slave girls in our beds, in our houses, right? In our houses while we're out, we go out and you jump in jump in our beds. You've got you've got this sweaty sex slave that you're boning in my bed, and then I'm coming back and laying down in the bed with soaked in the sweat of your your slave girl. What the heck, right? They're, they're flipped out. They're flipping out about this." Then Muhammad, I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah, I will not do that again. I will stop having sex with my slave girl. I will not go near her again. And this is Allah's response. Oh, prophet, why did you prohibit yourself from what Allah has made lawful to you, seeking the approval of your wives? So you took an oath saying that you would stop having sex with your slave girl. Allah says, I didn't tell you to do that. You're trying to make your wives happy. Why do you care about making your wives happy, idiot? (laughs) I said you could do it. Darn. Why are you trying to make your wives happy? And then what's he saying? Next verse. Allah has already ordained for you the dissolution of your oaths. So <laughs> I swear by Allah, I will never do that again. Oh, Allah didn't tell me to say that. I take back my oath. It's totally canceled. I'm good to go. And this is, notice, this is Allah telling his prophet it's okay to break an oath he swore to his wives in the name of Allah. And Allah says, break that oath, man. Go bone that slave girl. He did. He got Do whatever you want. You are the prophet. You have the sexual strength of 30 men. You cannot help yourself. You need to do this. You need to go and have sex with your slave girls and with all the women you can find in the world, but only you, not anybody else. And, only you. And, and notice, really glad that, I'm really glad that's what Allah cares about. You know, yeah. and, and notice, so. notice that, I mean, he Allah's sending a message here. These Muslims, Ali Dawah and Muhammad Ajab, they've absorbed this. Why do you care about seeking the approval of your wives? Why do yeah. you care? You can see that running through this this discussion. We're, we're not we're not here for you. We're not here to please you. This is not the religion of your feelings. This is a religion of submission to Allah. Yeah, we don't care about your feelings. We care about Allah. Doesn't care about your feelings. That's and, that should be the Ben Shapiro uh, quote. <laughs> what is, facts and, facts don't care about your feelings. And what does Allah care about? That Muhammad gets to have sex with as many women as he wants. That's Absolutely. that's very important. That's Allah. Yes. Allah Allah cares about two things: one, getting Muhammad as many sexual partners as Muhammad could dream of, <laughs> and two, two, making sure everyone walks, talks, eats, thinks, and breathes like a seventh-century Arab. That's that's yeah. what those are the things yeah. Allah cares about. <laughs> I, I this just just reminds me of this the the, the song It Wasn't Me by Shaggy. Wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. Pick hey, hey, we should make a we should make a video <laughs> like vocab <laughs> vocab as Muhammad, but that's that that's the music. We make a music <laughs> video. <laughs> he comes he comes out of the room, wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um yeah, okay. 
Picture, Bottom. picture this, and picture this. We were both butt naked, banging on Hafsa's <laughs> bed. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Man, two things. One of them is hadith of Rajul Imraati. That for, when a man speaks to his wife. And I take my selfish needs out of it, <sighs> i.e., me wanting him all to myself. I need to understand them. So I need to sit down and I need to really think about oh how this is going to affect him. Look at the girl beside her. See how. Like that is not that is not selfish. Is, that is, is not selfish. Are here's my question: Are Muslim men children? Yeah. Like, like, oh, it's so selfish of me to keep him on myself. He should get to go around and do whatever he wants. Like, like, why can't he just be an adult and control himself and realize he made a commitment to one woman in a monogamous relationship, it's and they hard. both need to stay committed? Like. Is it hard for her? Why can't? Why doesn't the Muslim man go? I need to stop being so selfish and let her run around sleep with all the men she wants. I mean, like, why is this always one way? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Also, I mean, notice it's the the entire the the basis for the argument is we want multiple women. We just have a desire to to sleep with multiple women. You women have a desire for one man for one man who's totally committed to you. So you women need to stop being selfish and let us get what we want. But notice what they're saying. Hey, it's not about, it, it doesn't matter what you want. It matters what we want. And why should you expect us to modify our desires for purposes of marriage when we can just do whatever we want? Meanwhile, they're saying you women have to modify your desires to make yourself okay with the idea of us boning lots of different women. And there's so that so notice the entire thing is it, it it matters what what we want, not what you want. And you need to change what you need to change your thinking to bring it in line with the fact that we want sex with lots of different women. Yeah. 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 And just for anyone saying like, well, if, if someone is like one of these tr traditional Muslim guys, uh, the pushback, if they try to say something like, well, you know, like someone's got to mod modify their desires. Well, again. I have meta-analytical research we can go over in a little bit, which shows that polygamy is extremely harmful to women and children. So uh, when men just modify their desires and become monogamous, guess what? It doesn't cause harm. When women have to modify their desires and let their husbands go around and have multiple wives, it causes immense harm to the women and the children in these situations. So what is the better route here? What is actually and, and it's, it's not like... Humans? It's not like um, it's, it's not like men are given the option to, uh, besides having a wife at home, to also go and uh, you know randomly have sex or to have one more wife. They are given the option to have three additional wives, so a, a total of four wives, mm. uh, children with all of them, because they are supposed to uh, you know breed to increase the number of the of the Muslim community. Plus, they are also allowed to have an unlimited number of sex slaves. Uh, yeah by fighting for Islam, for Allah. And and you can think about how, like, that's just going to cause so much political instability. Because, again, as we've established, there are more men in the world and have been, and there always has been, throughout most of history. So when a Muslim man has, like, three wives, okay, then there are three, then there are two other men over there who don't have any wives. What is going to happen? Well, again, it leads to political instability because they in, end up joining militia groups that attack the ruling elites to take the women and the wealth and everything else. So, man, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I'm testing her to see how she responds. Mm, yeah. That's, you know, if she decides to do the opposite, which is, you know, um, you know, throw the divorce card or throw this card, then yeah, ultimately yeah. she's falling into the act of disobedience. Thank as you. Thank to you. <laughs> Ali Dawa was saying thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Yes, my well we're proud of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ali Dawa was like, you know what? I want my wife to listen to this. Could you talk to her? <laughs> but I mean, guys, this is you know, this is this is hilarious to us. But I mean, this is messed up. I mean, what what are they doing? They are the the the, the leaders of Dawa, the champions of Dawa, are realizing. We need to more actively and aggressively condition women to think that they're the ones with the problem. If they have a problem with us having multiple wives, we need to condition them. We need to insert it into the in, into their the, the the ideas of the ummah, which has already been there, but they're trying to make it more clear and explicit. Um, we need to convince these women that. The more, the more open they are to us having second second wives, the better they are. You, you are you are a good woman. You are a good wife 
if you don't want me all to yourself and you're okay with me having multiple wives, then you're good. If you're, if you're, if you only want me all to yourself, you're a bad selfish wife and you're bad before a lot. You're a bad Muslim woman. You're just, you're just all around bad. And I mean, you can't blame me from divorcing you. So I get a better wife than you because well, you're garbage. Those are the ideas that they're trying to insert into these uh, women's heads. And I mean, seems like they can, they can do it pretty, pretty easily and pretty quickly. Well, I mean, you're you're onto something because there's a there's a psychologist, Anna C. Sattler. She wrote a book called Predators. Don't make up I names, man. Wait, is that the did she make did she make Daniel's laptop? <laughs> okay. It was all part of our master plan, <laughs> yes, to make sure that was on his laptop. Yeah. But she wrote a book called Predators, where she looks at like rapists, pedophiles. A lot of the times these victims are groomed. It's, she uses the word manipulated. Uh they, she says. They manipulated the children's affections through bribes, gifts, games. Uh, predators often spend a lot of time grooming the family before they start grooming the victim. They groom everyone around them to make them think this is the way to go. So a lot of times these victims, women or children in these kind of incidents, think everything is fine because they have been manipulated. So what's interesting in the meta-analysis that I, I will get to in a little bit, they the women often report they're happy. They love it. But then they have all these mental issues. They develop a lot of women in these polygamous relationships develop something called first wife syndrome, uh, which they're obviously jealous of the younger new wives that have come in. And it causes all sorts of psychiatric issues. Uh, and so they may be reporting they're happy, but they're falling into a similar mentality that people like St who have Stockholm syndrome have. They think they're being protected and they're happy. Really, really, they're suffering from all sorts of mental deterioration. And by the way, you see all, one, you see all of this in the life of Muhammad and you can see how this will all play out and it's not going to go the way these women want because, uh, you, you know, we, we talk about, Hey guys have, have some self-control. We know guys, we know lots of guys have a desire to have sex with lots of women. The, the idea of entering into a marriage is saying, Hey, I'm committing to you. Yes. Yes. Just biologically the way I was born. Uh, yeah, I have lots of desires to have sex and so on. I'm committing, I'm committing completely to you. And then these guys are coming along saying from an, from an Islamic perspective, no, 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 you don't have to do that. And so they, they want these women to be okay with the concept of having additional wives based on this man's desires. But yes, as, as you just pointed out, wait, these this this man's desires now there's a competition among wives going on and this guy's bringing in younger hotter wives guess what you're you're just going to keep getting older you the original wife you, you're just going to keep getting older and older and older and if this guy has never learned to actually commit and he's just always going with what his desires tell him what happens when you are way past your prime and he can divorce you and trade you in for a younger model, what's he supposed to do? Oh, his desire is for the, the, the younger, hotter wife. That's exactly what we see in the life of Muhammad. Muhammad, um, it, it, once his wife Khadija died, he married two people after that. There are disputes about it, but it's it's Sauda and Aisha. Sauda was Sauda was a was a, a woman who's uh, you know closer in age to Muhammad, and then he married his little child bride. Later on, after Muhammad had married a bunch of new wives, Sauda was said to be old and and overweight and unattractive to him, and so Muhammad was going to divorce her to make room for another wife. And then Sauda laid aside, agreed to lay lay aside because no one was allowed to marry Muhammad's wives after him. So she would have just been like kicked to the kicked to the curb. So she actually comes to an arrangement. Hey, the night that you would spend with me, give that to Aisha. So now you can spend twice as much time with your favorite little child bride and just ignore me, but don't divorce me because I have no way of surviving if you divorce me. And the Quran actually praises her for coming to that uh, coming to that arrangement. So, I mean, th this is real life stuff where if, if, you're, if your husband is just going with whatever he wants most and you're okay with that, hey, just go with your desires. Okay, guess what? Uh, you, you hit 40, 45, 50, 55, and he can trade you in for a, a an eight or nine year old, or I mean, you know, Daniel's calling the shots a five year old, a four year old, or something like that. And your guy's a total pervert, and he has no self control. Uh, what's he gonna do? Are, are, perfect. This, this perfect man. Come on, perfect man. Yeah, and this guy is uh, supposedly better than the Apostle Paul, who said in First Corinthians seven that the uh, husband's body belongs to the wife as the wife's body belongs to the husband. Like, he's weak. So he's weak for saying that. <laughs> all the women, all the women belong to the, to all the women's bodies belong to me. You see? <laughs> Good. 
So uh, here's the source. It says, um, Asha told when, that oh, when they God. were with Ibn Abbas, uh, is this the one? Yeah, am I reading this right? Soda and this. Soda. You're not anyway. even in the right hadith, man. I don't know if I'm actually reading the right thing here. Uh, key. Oh. This is God's messenger's wife. So when you lift her, do not shake her or disturb her. Be gentle with her. Blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute. I don't even know if I pulled up the right thing. I'm totally. She died in Rizin said that someone other than Atta declared she was Sauda, and that is oh, Sauda. She, yeah. she gave her day to Aisha when yeah. God's messenger intended, intended to, to divorce, divorce her, her. Mm -hmm. saying to wow. him, Keep me. I have given my day to Aisha, the young child <sighs> bride whom he loved so much. Perhaps I may be one of your wives in paradise. There are other Hadiths which say that he then just accepted it and she stayed his wife and. You know, but she didn't have any sexual interaction with him anymore because he didn't this like is, her. This sounds so depressing. I feel so bad for her just reading this. Yeah. Uh, well, Muhammad did the right thing because he's the perfect human to ever walk to the face of the earth. So who are yeah, you yeah. to feel bad, uh, dear? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Mike, you you could by the way, AP, if you wanted to pull it up, that's uh, uh, that's that's in Surah four. The the verse Allah's response to this. Surah four, verse one twenty eight. One twenty eight. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that's yeah. Definitely, Allah, definitely Allah responds. So <clears throat> so, uh, Sauda finds out that sh that Muhammad's going to divorce her, and then she basically pleads to Muhammad, "Hey, I, I will renounce some of my marital privileges. I'll give my my night of the week to Aisha, so you get to spend. If you uh, if you don't divorce me, you get to spend twice as much time with your child bride. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> if a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, there is no blame on either of them if they seek fair settlement, which is best. Humans are ever inclined to selfishness." Uh, but if you are gracious and mindful of Allah, surely Allah is aware of what you do. So this is actually a n notice the the what's the next translation? What is that? Sahih Internet? Uh, why am I am I called the Sahih International? <clears throat> uh, I don't have that here. Let me see. Uh, no, I wasn't. I was. I was just asking what translation it was. But you can read any of those. But oh, yeah, that was it's, clear it's, Quran, I think. Here, this is yeah. Sahih International. Yeah, just scroll down to a scroll down to another translation. Oh no. No, I looked up a different thing. If you want all the translations, I can get you that. I was just saying, bring up a couple translations, man. What are you doing? I will do that. I will do that right here. Um, <clears throat> and if a woman fears from her husband contempt or evasion, I'm just looking at the different translations. If a woman fears ill treatment from her husband or desertion, Yusuf Ali, if a uh, wife fears cruelty or desertion on her husband's part, there's no blame on them if they arrange an amicable settlement between themselves. So... This is about Sauda saying, um, hey, Muhammad is going to divorce me. I'm not even allowed to marry another man after him. So I'm about to be kicked to the curb forever. Uh, hey, I'll just keep keep making sure I have food, Muhammad, and you can you can spend more time with your child, bride. And Allah praises her for it. Notice the response. The response could have been. Why would you think that Muhammad would divorce you just because you're getting old and, and overweight and unattractive? Do you, do you think that the greatest man is going to kick you to the curb because you're overweight and and you know you're you're old now? Do you think he's going to just kick you to the side and trade you in for a younger model now? Of course not. He's the perfect man. He's the pattern of conduct. Mm -hmm. He would never do that. That's not what it says. It says good job, girl. Good job. Made a wise decision. You're a you're a wise woman saying, "Oh, I fine. If Muhammad doesn't want to see me anymore, he doesn't have to. Just just, you know, don't don't abandon me so that I starve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty messed up. There's also another Quran verse, um, which I don't know which one, I don't remember the, the which one that is, uh, which basically threatens Muhammad's wives and says uh, that if they bother him, they, they, that he may divorce them and Allah will give him new wives. Uh, yeah, I, the, if, 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 you, if you continue in Surah 66, you start, you start getting some of those. Um, let me see. Let me pull it up here. Um, oh, dang actually, it. I can't get on my Quran site anymore. This king keeps jamming. What is that? Oh, here. Quran. Let me, let's, let's have this here. Quran chapter 66, verse 5. It says, uh, perhaps his Lord, if he divorced you all, would substitute for him wives better than you, submitting, believing, devoutly obedient, repentant, worshipping, and traveling. Uh, traveling means... <laughs> 
fit being able to you know move around and, and uh, by, by the way notice it's hey you ladies who are complaining about him having sex with his slave girl in your beds while you while you're out and now you've caught him and he tried to he tried to get you to shut up about it but now he's now Allah told him it's okay for him to break his oath because he swore an oath saying he wouldn't do it anymore and that made you happy and now you're <coughs> complaining uh your bad wives, he could give you better what he could a lot could give Muhammad better wives than you. What so what why why are these why are these wives bad? They're bad because they objected to the idea that when they go out to go shopping, he jumps in their beds with one of his slave girls. And yeah. shame on you, shame on all of you. Terrible Notice, wives, it's, it's terrible. The, it's the exact, <laughs> it's the exact same mentality of these Muslim da'is trying to lecture these women on how they're supposed to be. Uh, you, if, if you're the bad ones, you ladies are the bad ones if you have a problem with us boning lots of women. You're the bad wives here. And we're it's, not bad. We're not bad if we're, out, if we're out doing this stuff. We're not bad. You're bad. Terrible, terrible, terrible women. So Allah gaslights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. A lot yeah, of a lot. The, hey. A lot. That's what the abusive guy would do in that relationship. Hey, that, that's his. Uh, that's his hundredth name. Allah, the gla the gaslighter. <laughs> the greatest of gaslighters. He's the greatest of gas. He's the best of gaslighters. <laughs> uh, AP, you should make a video called Allah, the best of gaslighters. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's get back to our uh, dear friends here. Huh? What's... Oh, I muted the tab. Is uh, with all due respect, disobedience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is, uh, with all due respect, Yanni, Yanni, I'm like your father. Huh? Uh, uh, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. If you are not a man enough to get married to a second woman, don't even dream about it because your first will come in your dreams and, gives you, and give you hell. <laughs> this is a well-known fact. They have the power. <laughs> <laughs> but by the by the way notice i mean note notice how they put everything right like you got to be man enough to have all these wives. you want to you, you want to be a man enough and and you women you're bad unless you're okay with it and they're they're just they're conditioning people like the the more wives you have the more manly you are and the the if you're a wife the more of a problem you have with that the worse you are as a wife and it's just uh this is, just, it is it is just so funny the conflict of of emotions of ideas that this guy just presented uh you have to be man enough and strong enough to be uh man enough to have a second wife and if you I, otherwise you might get a second wife and your your, your woman might uh you know be terrifying and come into your dreams because yeah. that's how women are so yeah apparently he thinks women are witches and practice yeah. all witchcraft like they're getting your dreams and no scary this is a fact with it, scientifically I, proven you know it, it's it's weird that they actually think of it like that like uh i uh i was i was i was uh arguing with a muslim one day about muhammad and aisha and the muslim started saying well she was flirting with him she was flirting with him when she was young, and I was like, "When?" It was like, "Yeah, before their, before their, before their engagement." She was, she was flirting with him, and I was like, "When was one? When was so they they, they arranged the marriage when she was six? So was she like five or something like that when she was flirting? When was she flirting with him? What's your source?" And he goes, "When she came to him in his dream." <laughs> and I was like, wait, when Muhammad, had, wait, when Muhammad, Muhammad had the dream that that Allah that an angel was giving, giving giving him this this six-year-old that's that was her flirting with him he goes yes that was her flirting he she was flirting with him in a dream right? imagine, like, imagine you're an adult you're a 50 year old man and you say my my my, my friend's uh six-year-old daughter she was hitting on me in my dream and i think i think she wants to get married to me yeah, yeah. this is why yeah, we have the second something. amendment for something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah if someone yeah. said that about my daughter I would be like, you have three seconds to start running before I, you know something happens. You do not say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. you know what? Notice what he said. Like, you're not man enough if you don't have a second wife. As we've already established. It's, it's established fact. There have always been more men than women. So think of the lower class men in Islamic societies that are being told, you're not man enough if you don't have two wives. And they can't even get one because, again, the upper class has taken multiple wives. Okay, what do you think that's going to lead to? 
it's going to lead to political instability, insurgent groups trying to fight the ruling class to get the wives to prove their men. This is just a recipe for, for social disaster. And you've uh, you you are you've already had Andrew Tate uh, commenting uh, in his tweets and stuff. Basically, that's saying, what I was just thinking. Yeah, basically saying you're not a, you're not a real man unless you have four wives and you're you're raising up the next generation stuff. But he's been posting all this stuff that that notice they're they're associating this with manliness. Uh, a, a a real man is not is a real man is not a guy who controls his desire and commits commits completely to a woman and then honors that commitment. That's not a real man. A real man is a guy who has no control at all over his desires and just, uh, just, just sp spends his entire life satisfying his desires like his prophet did. Yeah. A real man uh, breaks his oaths, lies to his wife, has yeah. multiple secret wives. Men, men, they may even be underage. Who knows? And then he can just divorce them when he wants younger ones, you know? Yeah, I just wanted to bring up the tweet from Andrew Tate, but now I can't find it anymore. Where he says, uh, "Imagine not having multiple wives." And yeah, that was that was back before his arrest. So that was like December or something like that, early December. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't. I'm even searching for the terms, but I can't find it now. By by the way, this entire this entire thing, this entire show, you could tell it's it's a it's a mirror of what Andrew Tate did. There was a Andrew Tate video circulating where he's he had he had four women sitting down and he's lecturing these women. This is this is like from his clubbing days. So this is not like post-Islam. This is uh him talking to women about a high value man. It's basically if you've got a man who's got a Bugatti and he's got a and he's got an awesome an awesome house and plenty of money. He says that man has his, his he's got his choice of women. He could pick any woman, any woman he wants. And he says, so what kind of woman is that guy going to choose? Is he going to choose a woman who's OK with him cheating on the side? Or is he going to choose a woman who complains and is and is is one? Hey, where'd you go? Where were you last night? Where did you go? And Andrew Tate was saying <laughs> he, he, that man is going to choose a woman who's OK with him cheating. That's that's who he's going to pick as his girlfriend because that allows him to go and satisfy his desires. And so he's telling these women that if they want a high value man, they need to be OK with him cheating. These guys saw it and they have a different justification. It's justified in Islam for them, but they're doing the exact same thing. What what Tate has. Oh, that's funny. What Tate has. What, <laughs> I, I was just looking for an Andrew Tate tweet, and I was wondering why I can't find it. Looking for all the words, and then it turns out he blocked me. That makes two of oh. us. That makes two of us. <laughs> wow. Top, top G, top G there. Top G, tough guy there. Yeah. Blocked me. But wow, notice, man. but notice. So, so they, so <laughs> they see this from their hero. Notice Andrew Tate didn't give them the idea that it's okay to have multiple wives. They're getting that from Islam. What Andrew Tate showed them is that you can just sit sit women down and tell them they're bad and low value unless they are willing to submit to a guy's desires, yeah. and that there are plenty of women in the world who will just go, okay, if, if that's what it, if that's what it takes to make me a good girl, then that's what I'll do, and they will they'll they'll take it and accept it. And now you've got the Daes going, hey, we can pull this same stunt here and tell women. So notice in the case of Andrew Tate, he it was in the context of, hey, if a guy is loaded, he has tons of money, he's providing for all of you. Guess what? He's taking care of his his end of the deal. You need to keep your mouth shut if this guy's boning all the girls he wants. And then the the Muslims, the Muslim Daes, they're doing the same thing. But it's hey, if you want to be a good Muslima, then Allah is okay with this. So you can be you can only be a good Muslima if you're okay with us having tons of wives. They're doing the exact same thing. They're just offering an additional justification, which Andrew Tate would now support. I just I'm I'm still stuck at uh, Andrew Tate blocking me. I I don't even know why. He what took you so long? He blocked me. He blocked me a while back. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't. I don't even know if I said anything. If I uh, responded to him or if I made a quote. Because here's look. You also see this here. It says you have muted tweets from this account because a while ago, maybe just a week ago or so, I thought oh, I'm sick of seeing this guy everywhere. So I just muted his account. That that's what I do. I mute because I don't want to see it anymore. He. He sees the stuff that I post and he blocks me. <laughs> it's funny, man. Wow. Wow. I'm top blocked G. by the top G here. Top G. <laughs> this is amazing. Blocked by top G. Blocked by <laughs> top G. Hey, are you blocked by top G? Are is I'm any not of you yet. blocked by the top G? <laughs> no, he's not blocked me yet. Huh? I'm cool. I'm blocked by top G. <laughs> hey, you should get a T-shirt blocked by Top G. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny.
That is funny, man. Yeah. See, no, there is no problem seems, yeah. in a man getting married to another <laughs> woman in this yard without the first wife's knowledge. There's, no, there's actually, I've not seen one solitary difference of opinion in any of the 14 generations of Islam. It's not there. See, here's the thing. Um, I read about this, and just to refresh my memory, I looked, I looked it up once more on uh, different channels of Muslim scholars and advices. The, the thing is, they all agree uh, that it is okay, that it is allowed for a man to have secret wives and to not tell their first wife. It, they don't have such an obligation. They can hide it. But um, some sources, some scholars, like the, the other mainstream, not the Salafi scholars, many of them say uh, it's not advisable, though. It's not the... The best thing to do but, but by the, the by the way that that is i, I only watched so you, you've got this sort of uh condensed compilation here from uh hatoon i watched probably 25 minutes of because the original video is like a, an hour and 15 minutes or something like that i watched probably the first uh 25 minutes of it that that is hijab's position he he is saying he's saying this is this is permissible but that doesn't mean it's advisable to be doing this oh. Okay. Um, mm. So he's saying, yes, you know, so it, it, it looks like the overall position is, hey, we need to get our wife, we need to get our wives to be on board with this. Uh, that, that's the, that's the idea. And it's, it's kind of like, oh, if we have to go this, this inadvisable route, it's because, you know, our wives are, will be mad about it if we don't. So we need to keep them separate from this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a problem. Which is any scholar saying that no a woman needs to know she needs to tell her okay, it doesn't okay. exist. Yeah, that's it. We're talking about the religion of Islam. That's none of you guys are okay with your uh, uh, husband getting a second wife. Can I just quickly just get that out of the way, Sister Swad? Absolutely not. You're not okay with that, <laughs> Sister. It, it's a no from me. And if okay. you have anything to say, say it now. <laughs> She's threatening uh, you're Sorry. finished. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sister Amira. Wait, wait, wait. What, what is the relation here? I don't yeah, understand. I don't. That's what I, I, I don't know. I don't know. She might be a wife of one of the four guys on the other side, but I don't know. It's just, it was a very weird thing. Wait but I mean, like, how are any of these women going to walk away feeling they can trust their Muslim husbands now? If they're told they're, if they're, their husbands are allowed to have a second wife, if they're told they're allowed to lie about it, I mean, it's just the paranoia is going to go through the roof now. Anybody who, in the, uh, anybody who is watching who knows if these women are, you know, related to these guys or if, you know, who these people are, let me know. I'm really wondering, right? Because this, this whole interaction between the two, wait, let's, let's see that again. Anything yeah. to say, say it now. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. it's, it's, just, uh, it's a no from me. And if okay. you have anything to say, say it now. <laughs> She's uh, you're Sorry. finished. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sister Amira. Huh. Yeah, it didn't look like she was looking at Ali Dawa. It looked like she was looking at, because you can see where Ali Dawa's hand is, right? And she was uh -huh. looking like kind of right across from her. So yeah, it looks like she is uh, maybe the wife of one of the other guys maybe uh, who's there. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, IP brings up an interesting uh, point. Like, like now that this is out in the open, it's like now it's on you ladies. We've explained to you why um why we would have secret second wives if we know that you guys are going to flip out over this stuff then we're going to keep it a secret so that that would lead to paranoia i mean if the guys are now open saying hey we'll have second secret second wives and it's islamically justified and we would rather not have it this way we'd rather have all you ladies be on board but if you're not going to be then we will have secret second wives and if that's actually the position then the only way you ladies cannot be paranoid is if you just tell us you're okay with us having second wives and you just want to know about it uh just so the only way it's either be paranoid and never know or tell us it's okay and then you'll know about it and you don't need to be paranoid mm -hmm. pretty creepy welcome, pretty to, islam. Creepy. welcome to islam <laughs> but you're bad if you have any problems here I can't even find this video on on Aydawa's own channel. I don't understand. Such a truth. That's weird. You want me to send you the link? Yeah. Why men? Yeah. Why men get secret second wives? Episode eight. Bitter truth. Okay, yeah, it's on Aydawa's. It's on Aydawa's channel. Why men get secret second wives? Episode then, eight. Bitter truth show. That he didn't put it in the, in the on, on the playlist of the. Why don't you look in the live streams? Is it in the it's live streams or? Mm, I don't think so. I'm sitting here I looking. Found it. Yeah. Yeah, any idiot can find it. Everyone except. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went on the linked podcast podcast page of this uh, of these, of the these of the show, but he doesn't have it there. So 
probably never edit it there. Let's see. I just sent a link to your email. IP was. Oh, first. there you go. You found it. If they put me, hijab, brother Sittaj, the one on lie to take the test. And they said the following questions. Would you love your wife? Yes. Pass. Would you die for her? Yes. Pass. If your wife was okay, would you get a second wife? Yes. Pass. There is not a conflict between a man loving his wife and a man wanting to be... Shut connected. up. I just want to find out what the, what the thing is. Yes, I agree. Oh. I get the polygamous... Yeah, what, is the, what are you doing? It's my the preview. I just want to see... I just want to see them introduced or something. Ugh, whatever, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I just want to find out if they say. Oh, you're finding out. Are you, you're still uh, trying to figure out who these ladies are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're anyway, I don't poor, care. unfortunate souls. It'd be it'd be funny if they're all like, they're all like the wives of one dude. Uh. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, oh, hey, but none of them know about it. <laughs> none, of them, none of them know. But they all keep looking at the same guy like, yeah, you better not have a secret second wife. And they're all like the wives of the same dude. Uh, oh, this is where they reveal it. At the end of the show, they come out with the big secret. And that could that stuff. could be an Islamic reality wow. show. Meet, yeah. my, meet my second wife. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> meet my other three wives. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. wouldn't that be wouldn't that be worth worth watching, right? Like you bring know, a woman out and you tell her it's one game show, but then she finds out that the real point of the game show is to meet the husband's secret second, third, fourth wives. Yeah, I think that would be and a, then an it's, amazing show. And then it's and then it's like, can they get along? And if not, you just you just give the wife the boot. <laughs> yeah, we're giving these people ideas here. No, uh, Sister Tyra, and I won't be happy with it. Sisters are under the impression. So they are all they all uh, say we don't want our husbands to take second wives. Terrible, you might, terrible. You might, women. you might want to replay that because that was imp that was important. So all these 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 guys are yeah, I'm okay with it. It's good. It's cool. It's guys, good. Can and you your the... uh, uh, husband get a second wife? Can I just quickly just get that out of the way, Sister Swad? Absolutely not. You're not okay with it yet, it's sister. Not, it's a no from me, and if okay. you have anything to say, say it now. <laughs> She's uh, it you're already. finished, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sister Amira, yeah, no, no, uh, sister Tyra, and I won't be happy with it. Sisters are under the so none of them wants stuff like this. They they are terrible, terrible wives, terrible women. They don't want their husbands to have uh, other wives. They're oh. selfish, terrible, terrible people, and Allah will punish them for that. Yeah. Yeah, but here you see the contrast uh, where it's obviously something that the, the men here are in charge of and the men this is, want this because this is their, their own desire and Allah's, Allah's feelings and the men's feelings and the women obviously don't want it, but they are supposed to sit here and be convinced that this is actually the right thing, you know, that, that they are wrong. They're bad. The right thing is actually that men should be allowed to do whatever they want. And you guys should just be quiet. Because we are babies. We have we have feelings. And we cannot control those feelings. What do you want us to do? Do you want me to sit That's... down and cry? No, I have to marry <laughs> more wives. That's what uh, Ali Dawa says here, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Someone came up with the name of my uh, reality show. They call it Burka Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. The impression that there is a man out there that is um, not polygamous. Because you guys are monogamous by nature, meaning you are. Did you, did you hear that? There, there are some stupid women here who think, <laughs> who think that there's a man out there who's not polygamous. How stupid can they be? The, the, I don't even know where to start with this. Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, they, they, they break it down in the longer clip, but Ali Dawa's point is that men by nature are polygamous. I know. Men, and that's, men, that's the men, argument. Men, that's... Want, men want to have sex. Now, now notice it's if, if you're. That, that's not polygamous by nature. That just means uh, guys like to have sex with lots of different women by nature. And here, here is Islam, the issue. Islam says do that within the concept. Islam says that's fine. Just do it in this halal, yeah. halal way. But the halal way is not. You can't say that's by nature. That has to be. That kind of has to be imposed. So notice, it's he 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 would seem from an Islamic perspective to have an idea of hey, what if I want to have sex with you know. 50 different women a day um no islam says no you got four wives well i guess you could if you had enough sex slaves and so on but uh it wouldn't be fine with you just running around having sex with women at at random so th there seems to be some concept 
of you can't just do whatever you feel like doing. And yet the, the, the basis of the reasoning is, hey, this is how we are by nature. And therefore, this is how Allah made us. So if Allah has made me to want to have sex with lots of women, why would I not do that? Why didn't Allah make multiple? Why why did Allah make basically the world where there's always going to be more men than women if that's how men actually are? Like, why give them these desires and to not make them fight to go around to make them to fight? Make fight, yeah, yeah. Well, because now you a, now now the only way for you to go out and get women, get all these women, is to compete and go out and fight and violently. Here's the issue. The world uh, and take here's the issue, everybody. Here's the issue. Um, that idea that he just presented is completely wrong. It is known nowadays to be wrong. It's known nowadays to be yeah. to be false. This is not a fact. I'm sorry, well, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but um, this is not a scientifically correct assessment of, of how uh, men and women are and how men and women feel. This is maybe. already updated scientific knowledge that uh, the whole idea that only men are natu naturally polygamous, that only men naturally want to go out and have sex with multiple partners, mm -hmm. that's, that's false. We have updated studies, and I also gave them to Daniel Hikikichi when he was having a debate with Nuria Khan, and he said he would look into them, which he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't. Women are just as uh, mm -hmm. naturally willing to have sex with multiple partners as men, according to the current updated science. A lot of people don't want to hear this, but this is the truth. Uh, if you put that article I put up on the screen, you're right. Men and women both want to have sex with multiple partners. It's a desire we have. But also, we are just naturally a pair bonding species in that uh -huh. we the, the human brain wants to go out and sleep with multiple people without, you know, with no strings attached. Yeah. But we also, men and women, want to have a special relationship with just sort of one other yeah. person. Yeah, that's so true. we evolved to be a pair bonding species. So we're monogamous. And this goes back to very early parts of our evolutionary history. Uh, this is one interesting theory that I always uh, like bringing up. Uh, that monogamy may have come about through this pair bonding idea that early uh, primates had this idea that they needed to protect their mate with gifts and food, and then they protect their offspring, and then the offspring eventually uh, grow up and start protecting their parents. It started to build this idea of a family unit, and it started with monogamy. So humans separated from chimpanzees and uh, bonobos, I believe that's the correct term, uh, you know, millions of years ago, and unlike our other closest relatives, chimpanzees, uh, we became a pair bonding species. We are the great ape species that became pair bonding. Uh, and so this idea that men are supposed to be polygamous, no, we are a monogamous uh, pair bonding uh, species. And even in uh, societies that allow for polygamy, the overwhelming majority of people become break off into pairs. And sure, they may have desires they want to sleep around, but they still want to have a, a pair. They have a special relationship with just one other individual that they have kids with. Uh, that they grow a family with. And so it's actually more rare. It's actually uh, more rare to find men who want to have like multiple families. Most just sort of want to have one family with one woman, but they also have desires that maybe they want to, you know, have affairs and, and that kind of thing. But it's not the idea they want to pair bond with all these other women. They want to, they, they have these, you know, these inappropriate desires about. Yeah. It's a, the, the entire argument is weird. Just the, the, the argument from, <laughs> Hey, I have this, because I, I by nature have this desire. Exactly. Therefore, I mean, by by <laughs> by nature, anyone who annoys me, I want to like beat his face in. That's like by nature, <laughs> right? By I mean, and that's like nice. I mean, if he someone really uh, annoys me, I like wanted to like torture him and murder his family in front of them. That's how I was by nature. Then it's like, oh, I can't do that, <laughs> right? I can't I can't do that. Uh. And so, but notice if I was supposed to go by if I if I was playing by these rules, hey, that you know, hey, that the way that the way go, maybe he maybe want to smash everyone's faces, so I got to do it, you know. And <laughs> and you're bad, you're bad if you don't want your face smashed in by me, right? Like you're that the bad one. Little, you're that's, mm -hmm. that sounded a little bit like Mike Tyson there when you said yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> but notice it's a uh, you're the bad one if you don't want your your face smashed in because I have that desire by nature, and under no circumstances should you be telling me to like control to control my desires. I mean, that, that's exactly right. Just because something is uh, naturally found in humans. And, and this, uh, just to clarify the earlier point, uh, I would never, I would not say that, uh, that men and women equally have the desire to have multiple, uh, you know, to have different sex partners. Therefore, 
we, we should do that. That's that's just an, an incredibly dumb point. The point is, if you want to argue from that from that uh, premise that that men are naturally polygamous and women aren't, therefore men should be uh, marrying multiple wives and women shouldn't. That's just plain wrong. It's 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 unscientific. It is wrong. If men have such a thing, then this is not exclusive to men. Women have the same uh, tendencies or desires as well. I know lots, lots of people don't want to hear this, uh, but 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 as David just pointed out, um, just because something is naturally found in humans, just because a desire, a certain tendency is naturally found, that doesn't mean it is uh, justified or that it should be, uh, you know, practiced. And if you disagree with it, then you are you are just you are just bad or you know a bad wife or a bad person people have a lot of tendencies which they ex uh, exercised throughout history there are a lot of things including uh pedophilia which we recently uh debated which uh <laughs> is is found as a mental disorder in people who have a a desire which they can hardly fi fight and they have to be treated just because it is now naturally uh there in their in their in their personality and they struggle with it does it mean that it is justified because they are struggling with it and poor guys how could we disagree with it how could we prevent it i mean it's just the whole argument uh, that these muslim apologists would use by saying this is natural to us therefore it is it is okay and you should be quiet is entirely nonsensical and, and by the way notice that that ties into another uh, andrew tate um, gem when he was arguing that the reason uh, you know a younger woman who's you know whatever he however he put it 18 or something like that is more attractive than uh you know a woman who's 25 or something like that is becomes because she's younger and less experienced but notice and and guys want a younger less experienced uh woman specific he said specifically says I, because I can I can leave my imprint on her. I can leave more of an yeah. imprint on her. But I pointed out way back when he said that, that that would be the exact reasoning of someone like, you know, the some of these dais that but but think about that. If by nature, I would prefer a younger, less experienced uh, partner so that I'm leaving more of my imprint on her and she's not messed up from some other relationship with some other guy, then you could say that that by nature, by nature, you should be going with, you know, five-year-olds, seven-year-old, mm. nine-year-olds, and so on. So they can make the exact same argument. Hey, by nature, we prefer younger, uh, less experienced girls, and therefore we should go extreme, uh, go extreme with this. And it's just, my, my goodness, guys, once you start arguing based on human desires, you get some really creepy stuff because people have some pretty freaking creepy desires, right? This is yeah. wild stuff. Yeah, but you know, if people feel something, that means it is justified, and Allah wants it. And uh, especially if it's if it's men feeling something, then women should just shut up and let no. them do it. Yeah. That's how it is, man. Or created like that. And then he's got the financial. Oh yeah, he says men are and women are not created like. You just that. want your husband, and you're happy with your husband. We are not created like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read a book, man. And then he actually said to me that he had never read books. So. And he's got the financial. Thing where he can reduce, mm -hmm. he can if she's being bad, she he can take money away from her. This can be seen in this country as abuse. So if she if she has evidence of that and she's got the stake backing, if he tries to impose his masculinity or his Islamic uh, you know abilities on her, then she can respond in a malicious manner. Which is why I would say that if a woman shows her claws in that way, yeah. this is an option of secret second, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I think it becomes a very legitimate option. I'm. Sh Ah, the language, the mentality. Wow. Tries to impose his masculinity on her. And she shows hey. her claws. Then no, no, notice what he's talking about. What what do you mean his masculinity? Saying, hey, I want to, I want, I want multiple wives because I'm because yeah. mascul I'm masculine. Notice it, it's it, they're always uh, presupposing the idea of if you want a bunch of uh, a bunch of sexual partners, you're manly, you're strong and manly. And if you don't, then you're 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 weaker. You're weaker. You're not a you're not a real high class, strong man. Now I, I don't want to I don't want to um, sound like I'm I'm virtue signaling here, but I'm pretty sure that I can speak for a lot of men uh, in saying that. Um, let put aside the whole uh, you know desirable desirability or desiring other women aspect. I'm pretty sure lots of people here simply would not want to have more than one actual real married no. partner i mean that's 
it's just it would be very idiotic yeah it's it's like it's like i mean i, I get what he's saying about just by nature if you did yeah. not have if you did not have anything to regulate your behavior that oh you know i want to have a bunch of sexual partners by nature yeah i want to punch a bunch of people in the face by nature too <laughs> that that's that's the part where self control comes in yeah. but yes as far as like hey here's a woman i want to spend my life with that's a, that's different right that's okay you know biologically i may have these desires i'm willing to lay all that aside for this relationship with you that like yeah, that's yeah. that's how important you are to me that i'll 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 cast aside everything else and commit to you and they're basically saying no. If you're a, oh, no, you're, you're not manly you're, enough. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to honor your word. You don't need to honor your wives in that way. You don't need to care even slightly about your wives' feelings. You're not a man. You're yeah, not, you're not a, a man, man if you care about any of that stuff. So it's in it's in the Quran. You see, you're not a if man. You want, uh, I got the the one of the meta analysis I can show to start showing how ridiculous a lot of this stuff is. Uh, but yeah, you're David. You're right. Humans are a pair bonding species. We don't want to pair bond with multiple. It creates problems because that's just not the way our psychology is. But there have been meta analysis that were performed uh, within the past few years. So this is one meta analysis I cited, and they looked at women. They said, uh, for example, women that were in polygamous marriages uh, had more likely to, to develop somatization. That's where you have. You constantly need to go to the doctor, but they can't figure out what's wrong. You just have like there's constant pain or something. It's, you know, it, it's a weird thing, but also obsession, compulsion, interpersonality, sensitivity, depression, anxiety, hostility, phobic anxiety, paranoid ideation, psychoticism. And they say it, in the conclusion down here, you usually read it. They say that it has a lot to do with loss of identity uh, uh, in these types of relationships because you've just become part more part of the community when you're one of these women you like sort of like lose more of yourself in that and so it actually is the mental issues are stemming from the polygamous relationships they also talk about first wife syndrome a lot of this stuff here uh this idea that they were developing like the, the first wife of course starts getting jealous of the younger wives and she starts to develop developing like somatic issues now when i brought this up to muslims they lose their mind because they read this sentence right here and they say a higher self-esteem and life satisfaction among women in polygamous marriages and statistically uh, superior family functioning among women in monogamous marriages were also found. So they go, well, the women say they're happier. They say they have more life satisfaction, well, higher self-esteem. Well, notice like, if they're if they're if they're if they're being conditioned to think, oh, you're mm -hmm. a good you're a good wife. You're a good wife if you're OK with this. And oh, OK, even even if I'm developing problems because of all this, but I'm going to I'm going to announce to the world that, yes, oh, this is this is great. I love it. I love I love sharing my husband because that's how oh, I yeah. show I'm a good wife. And you can't measure life satisfaction like you can see a mental disorder like you can see someone suffering like a, an expert, like a psychiatrist can know when someone's suffering from you know, major depressive disorder, anxiety, all these other related issues. How do you know when someone is actually having life satisfaction? Well, in these studies, you just have to ask, ask them. And that's what they did. They filled out like this questionnaire and they say, are you satisfied with life? And they go, yes. So they basically just report they're being happy. So what Muslims, when they think this study works against my argument against polygamy is they don't realize how little they understand how these studies are performed. Someone can get a psychiatric evaluation and you can learn they're suffering from all sorts of mental disorders. And often they report they're happy. Victims of Stockholm syndrome report they're happy. They're being protected by their abusers. Victims of, of uh, groomers and uh, predators often report, no, they weren't abusing me. They, was, they, they were always nice and they cared and they always did these things, even though they're being abused. Again, Anna Sattler's book Predators points this out. So, yeah, they can report they're happy. But often humans are quite adaptable and they often adapt to the horrible situations they're in and try to make meaning out of it, try to justify it. Uh, this is just well known that humans are easily manipulated. They try to make meaning out of uh, hard situations. So we would expect them to report. So it, you could say in some sense, it's not incompatible with the idea they would report they're happy, even though they're suffering from all these horrible mental issues that they're going through. I mean, there's just a lot in this. Uh, and the other meta-analysis I have, I can pull that up here. Uh, it's what it's really weird because it was actually they did two different meta-analysis in the same year, which is like gold. I mean, you you don't get a lot of that typically. Uh, typically, you get like you know, you know, you'll get like one meta-analysis, you know, occasionally. But there were two done in like the same year. 
So like that was actually pretty good. So this one, uh, polygamous impact on the polygamous marriage, women and children, a systematic review. Uh, if I just go down to the conclusions, uh, they say uh, polygamous wives actually reported low self-esteem in this meta-analysis. Uh, also, children had lower achievement academics in the two studies that were included. Uh, they suffered from all sorts of issues as well. I mean, the discussion just goes in. Among women, depression was found to be significantly different between polygamous and monogamous marriages. Women and children in polygamous marriages have higher scores in somatization, obsessive compulsive, interpersonality sensitivity, anxiety, hostility, phobia, paranoia, psychoticism, and GSI compared to monogamous marriages. So when the Muslim men might come say, look, you know, like they have this desire to sleep with multiple women, but their wives have this, their desire that they are only committed to them. Who has got to give up on their desires? Why do these Muslim men who have a, apparently have a right from Allah to sleep with multiple women, why do they have to give up their desires? Surely their wives have to give up their desires for them to be monogamous. Well, no, if the Muslim men give up their desires, it leads to overall better quality of life for everyone, their children, their wife. If the women give up their desire for their men to only be committed to them, what happens? It leads to all sorts of horrible problems, causes mental deterioration, psychiatric issues. The children suffer in these, in these situations. So why wouldn't we not be called as men to give up a desire to sleep around and have multiple wives if they actually have that? That would be far better for society at large. And as we talked about earlier in this stream, polygamy leads to political instability. It causes society to break down because there's not enough women to go around for the men in lower class <coughs> because all the upper class men are, are greedy and lustful and they hog them all and they cry if they don't get multiple wives. So, I mean, this just it's just there's just so much evidence that polygamy is harmful to women. It, it should be rejected by everyone. I find it so ironic that when, if you ask these, uh, these Muslim apologists, these guys, they will um, tell you immediately that women are, you know, naturally, uh, you know, they, they tend to fight and compete with each other and, uh, and all of that stuff. But at the same time, they want to propose a society where men have uh, multiple wives who constantly, you know, are competing with each other over one man. And then they also talk about stability at the same time. It's it's just it doesn't make any sense if you put it all together. Yeah, this yeah. is the this is the same thing we see over and over and over again uh, from the from the beginnings of Islam. But I mean, you could think about it in terms of like Islamic apologetics. We've talked about this a million times before. They can read the entire they can read the entire Bible, and they will only fixate on the things that they think agree with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can again, they can read, they can go to a chapter, read verse one, contradicts Islam. Oh, no good. Con <laughs> read verse two, contradicts Islam. Get to verse 18. Oh, here's something we can twist into a prophecy about Muhammad. You see, that's as good as gold. And it's like they're just, they're just trained. Their entire methodology is just conditioning and training themselves to see only what is convenient to them at some given moment. And so that's why you could put any of these studies in front of it. They will only see what only confirms confirms their desires and what they want in life that's all, that, that's all well the problem is all of these studies were funded by the west by the <laughs> evil west, <laughs> that wants to suppress well, the right the truthful well, ideas if these are all like part of a conspiracy which i'm sure they would say why did the first men analysis willingly report that women were filling out their life satisfaction questionnaire and saying they're happy surely that should have been hidden from they're trying to hide this thing i mean like this, this whole nonsense about conspiracy, if you actually read the studies, you always find outlier me metrics. I mean, well, the, the evil, the evil imperialist, anti Islamic, uh, satanic, uh, uh, uh Zionist American <laughs> West that is in charge of all of these studies wants to make sure that they also include a few things that disagree with them just so you it's believe awful. them more. But they are in charge and all of that nonsense. Yeah, it's this awful. is that's basically what's what Dan Lee just said to you in response to all your studies, right? Oh, yeah, it's all part <laughs> of the evil conspiracy to prevent them from raping children. I mean, like, first of all, even oh, if, even though how <laughs> even though he is <laughs> even though he's right that Western powers have done horrible things, you just can't do this like you know the, this this foul this association fallacy. Just because Western powers have done bad things, that doesn't mean everything they endorse or argue for is necessarily bad. Excuse I mean, me, like, of course it is a bad. West <laughs> automatically means bad. So if the West we, endorses something, that means it is bad. We should start getting them to realize that the West tells them to brush their teeth and our argues <laughs> everyone's over there brush your teeth. And then we'll see Muslim men for like next year or so, like have all these horrible teeth. And like, well, the West told me not to brush my, told me to brush my teeth. Therefore, yeah, I shouldn't. Yeah. 
Yeah. You will see generally Kikich just say only the the the, the Western <laughs> loving bootlickers uh <laughs> say that we should brush our teeth. Real Muslims stand with the truth and oppose such atrocious Western ideas. Only the bootlickers will support such an idea. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, matter, matter matter of fact, that's uh I mean that's uh that's the entire approach of Daniel and his followers is anytime you make any argument against Islam, they just say, oh, you're siding with the, the Western liberal uh, conspiracy and agenda. Yeah. So, yeah, now you, you're right. You guys are right. You should just find anything, anytime Daniel agrees with anyone else and say, you see, he's just copying the, the uh, <laughs> Western liberal agenda conspiracy. He's just copying it. Muslims are copying it all. And hold that thought. I want to bring up one thing just to show to everyone that we are absolutely not exaggerating. This just reminds me of uh, <laughs> something that Daniel posted just today, a few hours ago, in response to people calling him out because, remember, he was uh, mocking little children who were crying because they cannot go to school. In response oh, to yeah. all of that, he posted this. He said, yes, I proudly and openly mock the crocodile tears of women. <laughs> little girls who want to go to school, women, uh, who are used to emotionally manipulate populations into supporting Western invasions, sanctions, and bombing of the Muslim world. That makes me a misogynist, but if you support these actors and the Western wars, their fake tears are supposed to justify wars that lead to murder and displacement of millions of Muslim women, then somehow you're a brave defender of women. So everything we just said about him, what he does, Absolutely not an exaggeration, completely on point. In response to people calling him out because he's mocking little girls who want to go to school, he says, of course I will mock uh, women who are used by the West to invade Muslim countries. And exactly what we just said. Yeah, notice, <laughs> notice, notice the reasoning. It's, hey, I'm making fun of these little girls for wanting to go to school and actually learn to, you know, read and so on. Um and you Westerners are, are are complaining that these little girls can no longer go to school anymore. But you're only complaining because you, it's propaganda that's being used to invade Muslim countries. And so either either shut your mouth up. I mean, shut your mouth about little girls not being allowed to go to school or you're calling for genocide in Muslim countries and, and for pointless wars. So it's one yeah. of the it's one of the other. That, that, that's always his thinking. It's always like some absurd extreme. You have to accept one absurd uh, extreme, or you're advocating for the other absurd extreme, and that's like it's the same like, thing when uh, when Destiny posted uh, cartoons about Muhammad. Daniel's first reaction to this was, "You see, this is what he does, and uh, if they were in charge, they would uh, genocide us Muslims." Mm -hmm. That's how he responded to the issue to to Destiny posting memes. You know? Yeah, Destin, <laughs> Destiny, Destiny. If Destiny had a button that would annihilate all the Muslims, he would push it. As as you can see from him posting this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous, man! It's it's absolutely crazy. Bond in a malicious manner, which is why I would say that if a woman shows her claws in that way, yeah. this shows is an option, a secret second, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. I think it becomes a very legitimate option. I'm sure. What, why do we, why do we always see, I, I, maybe it's just me, but I constantly see Muslim men just talking so bad about women. Like they got claws. They can invade your dreams. Apparently. Women oh, like it's, let's make fun of them because they want to get an education. Uh, you know, the Daniel Kikichu talking on his channel about like, you know, like if, if all men disappeared, women would go extinct. They wouldn't be able to raise the boys and the girls to be, you know, it would be impossible because they just can't take care of themselves. Oh, I, I, I want to tell you one thing to add to all of that. Daniel Kikichu's idea is also if you allow women's education, then this will inevitably lead to women becoming free and creating online pornographic content. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, no, not, no. I'm not kidding. Notice, he actually said notice, that. It's the exact, it's the exact <laughs> same thing. It's either go with my extreme, uh, uh -huh. you know, people keep a, keep little girls locked up, get them married off when they're super young, never let, never allow them to be educated at all, or they're going to work for Andrew Tate and do online porn. Even though Andrew Tate <laughs> is, our, is our hero in the Muslim world, you don't, you know, you don't want your daughters doing that. You want other people's daughters doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a huge slippery slope, and he does it all, all the, time. the time. All the time. Go on and comment some more stuff. I'm going to find a few things here. It's 
since Mike yeah, has I, asked why Muslims often talk so badly about women, I would like to find a few things about women that Muhammad well, said. It's, it's just it's just weird to me. Like I know that there are Christians that talk bad about women. I know there are atheists that talk about bad about women. But I mean, like maybe it's just lately I've just been seeing so much. In this this thing we just watched with them sitting in front of these women and saying, "No, no, no, we can lie to you. Your desires don't matter. What's important to you doesn't matter. What matters is what we want, and we just want to sleep around with whoever we want." It's like, like do you not like? realize the harm this is causing as the research i cited shows you're going to cause severe mental deterioration in, in these women should that not be more important than you just wanting to bang a bunch of women who are also going to suffer from mental issues because you're bringing them into the problem i mean like do you not like do you not care like i, I don't understand where this desire comes from to set aside care for the women and only care about what the men desire. This just is a very weird thing to me. I don't understand. And I, I know there are probably many of Muslim men out there that would be disgusted by this behavior. I'd like to see more of them coming forward and standing with, you know, sane peoples condemning this behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here are a few things to to mention if you want to more if you want to know more about why Muslims think this way. Uh, here is one example. Muhammad says, the prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? Mm. The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind. Amen. So, women are less intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, here's oh. another example. I looked at paradise. The, the prophet said, I looked at paradise and saw that the majority of its residents were the poor. And I looked at hell and I saw that the majority of its residents were women. Well, well if, if all the women are in hell, how do they have multiple wives in heaven? <laughs> Allah creates uh, new wives oh, for them. Of course. So, it's yeah. just magic. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a very popular hadith, by the way. I heard this. I mean, lots of Muslims hear this a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Bukhari. Yeah. Hey, yo, AP, I just, uh, I just sent you a link. Uh, to a hadith that that hijab actually cites uh i sent it to your i sent it to your phone send you gotta just you guys gotta drop it in the private chat like there's a private the chat private right chat. there yeah send it to well the yeah but i i have it on my i guess i could look it up over here on the, I, I got two oh. i got a laptop and a computer open the just, private chat just, is on my computer yeah i think i got Eva it with i got it i got it i got it just, here it is there we go there we go you're such a deep so hijab actually cites this uh, it is not, the Messenger of Allah said, it is not lawful to lie except in three cases. Something a man tells his wife to please her, to lie during war, and to lie in order to bring peace between the people. What's creepy is there can be all sorts of, you can incorporate all sorts of additional ideas about lying into these concepts, like to lie during war. Well, they view themselves as at war with people like, us here right there's this ongoing battle and that's why they think it's okay to lie to us and that's why you will never be in an exchange with muhammad hijab where he is not or ali dawah where they are not trying to actively deceive you in some way he openly not admitted to me I, I mentioned this in my in my long video about him he openly admitted to me when he challenged me to to a debate and i accepted it and i said uh it's going to be an online debate and he was like yeah okay whatever and then in the end he was like okay so send me your location i will come there and we will debate in person i was like what are you talking about we already what? agreed that it would be online yeah. and he said well but we didn't condition it and <laughs> and later when i when i talked to him about this further he admitted to me directly that since he did not make make a written agreement with me he was not uh bound by anything so he could easily change his commitment yeah. and even even if he made a, a written agreement he could he could he could change that as well because he does not believe that he has to be honest in a state uh yeah, in, yeah. with people that that he's at war with but notice the something the man tells his wife to please her now you could you could you could think of this in a fairly harmless like uh, the example that they'll use, and they, they use it in one of the one of the sources, at least the commentary or something like that. Like, if your wife cooks something and you say, "Oh, that's good," even though you don't like it, oh, okay, you're just being nice to your wife. But uh, you could also apply. You could also apply. Well, it's going to upset my wife if I tell her I'm not banging these additional uh, women and girls out there, and therefore, since I know this would upset her if she knew what I was doing on the side, I'm going to lie to her about it. Because that's that's to keep her happy. Because I know that she, like the four women they had in line there, 
um, all of them said that they did not want their husbands to have some some additional uh, wife. And so, okay, so if if your wife if your wife is like one of these women, then in order to please her, you lie about your your secret second second wife or third wife or fourth. Yeah, here's my favorite hadith about about women. I absolutely love this. <laughs> uh, it says, Jabir reported that Allah's messenger saw a woman. And so he came to his wife, Zainab, as she was tanning a leather and had sexual intercourse with her. He then went to his companions and told them, the woman advances and retires in the shape of a devil. So when one of you sees a woman, he should come to his wife, for that will repel what he feels in his heart. So if you don't, <laughs> if you don't understand what's happening here, he's walking outside and he comes across a woman and then he... He thinks, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to have sex with that woman. I want to bang that woman, and then he goes home to one of his wives, as she's tanning leather. She's working. He grabs her and has sex with her, and then he's so relieved and goes outside and tells his Muslim followers, "Women come in the shape of a devil. So if you see a woman outside, you know, and and you get really aroused, go home to your wife and have sex with her immediately, because women are like a devil." Yeah. And by by the way, notice because uh, if you when. And I know from experience, when you quote this to a Muslim, he'll say, oh, well, what's what's wrong with, you know, if your desires are aroused, going to your going to your going to your wife. That's not the point. This is your pattern of conduct. The ideal man in your religion had so little had so little self-control that if he's just walking down the street and he walks by an attractive woman, he has to. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I have to run home. I have to run home. I have to run home. And uh and look, people have pointed this out. People from other countries, they're like, do you know how disgusting it is when someone is tanning leather? They're like, do you know the disgusting smell in, in an area where you're tanning leather? She would have been, everything would have been disgusting to her. She would have smelled awful. And Muhammad just, ah, I have to go home. I have to go home and bone her. Ah, I have no self-control. And it's like, guys, everyone who's watching, Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever, um, just think how many women you pass by as you're going about your daily business um the supreme pattern of conduct in islam had low so little self-control that if he simply walked he simply passed an attractive woman on the street he was overcome with oh i have to uh i have to get to a woman right now or i'm just gonna explode and like this is this is again the ideal pattern of conduct for you yeah whenever i see a woman i i feel this uncontrollable urge i feel completely uh messed up inside i immediately go home I, I can't i can't uh interact with a woman for more than you know a few seconds i immediately have to go to my wife and have sex that's usually how it goes yeah yeah that's what okay I mean. hey, you, hey we should make a video about this where like a guy walk <laughs> muhammad walks outside his door sees a woman ah! and he runs home and, has that <laughs> and then he walks outside again <laughs> and <he runs> home. <laughs> Um, evil omen was mentioned before the prophet. The prophet said, "If there is evil omen in anything, it is in the house, the woman, and the horse." Yeah, and so on. You know, the prophet Muhammad said some very nice things about women, so it's no surprise that Muslim men uh, talk so nicely about women. And of course, if a woman disobeys you, the Quran says in chapter four, verse thirty-four, that men are in charge of women, and if the woman if if he yeah. fears arrogance, then he may advise her or separate beds and finally beat her so that she becomes obedient again. Yeah, yeah. I remember in all my research on Daniel from our debate, I, I came across him defending this. And if I was going to steal man what he said, he was like, you know, it's it's like a last ditch thing, like it's like the last resort kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like you know, he, he compared it to. Um, an employer who's got a disgruntled employee that he fires and the disgruntled employee doesn't want to leave the premise. So the employer has to call the police. He does the employee doesn't want to go with the police. So they eventually put him in handcuffs and take him out kind of thing. And he says like, it's kind of like that. I mean, the husband, you do everything you possibly can. And, and then he makes this lame excuse. Like, wouldn't you want the husband who cares so much about his wife to really be in charge of this, not the state, who is going to abuse and throw her in prison, who do you really want in charge? And all I can think about is like, that is the dumbest argument ever because <laughs> typically in married, in, in couples like this, there's so many emotions involved. There's all this, he said, she said kind of stuff. Wouldn't you want a neutral party to come in and go, all right, all right, I will, let, let's get to the facts here. What do you have to say? What do you, this is why you go before a judge in these kind of things. 
you wouldn't just want the husband who's emotionally involved with this woman, this apparently this disgruntled woman who's fighting back for whatever reason she may have to be the one who's just going to have the final say. It makes far more sense when you have two adults to go before a neutral party to solve these issues. So, I mean, he's trying to make, put it in a good light. And all I can think of, think about is listening to him explain this going, this is horrible because you're, you're, you're not going to have a neutral judge involved. You should want yeah. a neutral party to, to solve this issue. Yeah, 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 but 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 what he thinks is that if two people are fighting, then they should just, uh, you know, beat each other and fight it out, and then solve the solve the matter instead of getting the iron fist of the state involved, uh, which would only oppress both of you. That's his logic here. <laughs> I just I I don't I don't understand. The guy is supposed to be a Harvard graduate, and he's also... a Harvard graduate that denies the moon landing. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also went to to Tufts, I think. And he's and, and he comes with such horrible, absolutely horribly idiotic logic, such terrible arguments that a lot of much less educated and much less uh, I don't know lucky people would laugh at it and think, "What in the world are you talking about? That makes completely that makes no sense at all." And he comes with this. He actually says, "If employers have the right to." Uh, apply force against disgruntled employees who don't want to leave uh, and if the state can uh, jail and imprison women who commit crimes then what is so bad about husbands beating their wives I mean, are you a dumb man i cannot think of a different word i mean this is just so stupid well, it's not even that it, like disgruntled employees are being beat. Like you know, the cops are coming and punching them or hitting them. They're just like saying, "All right, we're gonna put you in handcuffs and take you out." Like, sure, you may have to wrestle with him if he's super disgruntled. And I, out to steal man, Daniel, he does say that any sort of wife hitting would be exceptionally rare. Like it would be like the last resort, like in the pl employer example. But still, you want a neutral party to be in this. I would, you know, a, a police officer is gonna have a much better case at handling this than a disgruntled husband who's been fighting with his wife for series and series of arguments yeah who, go no, ahead. He, he, he just he seems to think of it in like this ideal sense right like okay in a perfectly functioning marriage then the husband as the last resort the final and last resort after he has examined all possible recourses and so on then reluctantly reluctantly uh, <laughs> beats his wife and not just uh, hey, you messed up my food, pow, right in the face, right? I mean, he, he's not thinking of like how it is in real life. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can you can look up the studies on, um, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, they call it the uh, the culture of the extension cord, just because that is the popular form of beating your wife. You grab an extension cord and just start, start mm -hmm. beating her with it and so on. And, yeah. but th those are the more realistic scenarios of like guys are just hotheads and they turn their wives into punching bags and so on. And the Islam says you, it's, it's none of your business what a guy does uh, when his wife is out of line. Uh, the, all the Quran says is you have to simply fear that your wife is going to somehow be um, arrogant or rebellious against you or something like that. That's enough. That's enough of a request. I, I think that I think that you're being rebellious. That's enough justification to beat her until her skin turns green. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the, the, the ideal state and he does this a lot where he can constantly compares like ID, his ideal Islamic state with realistic Western societies. And that's just not a fair comparison. He really should be comparing realistic Islamic societies with realistic liberal societies or Western societies or Christian societies. You're expecting but, way too much of him. Oh yeah. Or idealistic. Like why doesn't he ever compare idealistic liberalism or idealistic Christian societies with idealistic islamic societies it's always he does a lot of the same thing i see communists do they compare their ideal communist state with like the current capitalist state and that's not a fair comparison you got to compare ideal states or realistic states yeah yeah that's the issue yeah and it's 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 interesting because if you if you you don't even you don't need to you don't have to go far to compare the realistic islamic states with the realistic western states <laughs> Which direction are people moving? Which direction are Muslims <laughs> moving? Muslims prefer Muslims prefer a realistic Western state to a realistic Islamic state, hands down. Okay, what you're getting wrong is, according to Daniel Kikichu, those Muslims are uh, weak, 
boot, uh, bootlickers who were brainwashed by the West. No, notice, notice the uh, the <laughs> the reasoning would be because no, notice Muslims flee Islamic realistic Islamic states to get to realistic uh, Western states. They prefer those hands down. Mm -hmm. But then when they get here and they start saying, "Hey, we need to we need to Islamicize everything." And it's like, wait a minute, you guys fled, you guys all fled states that were these these hell holes that you wanted to get away from, and you think it's better over here. And then the response is, ah, but those aren't those aren't correct. They're not doing Islam correctly. So let's make the ideal Islamic state over here. Let's make Islam how it's supposed to be over here. It never works in practice, yeah. but somehow over here we can make it work in practice. And it's like, no, you would you would what you would end up if you got your way you would make it another realistic islamic hellhole that's exactly how communists argue that's actually a very good comparison by by michael earlier <laughs> yeah I, and you know there was a paper by roland to salem that i've cited before uh where he compared protestant catholic and islamic societies uh and side by side and he looked for things like political stability citizen empowerment political transformation voice and accountability in government and what he found was that in Catholic and Protestant societies, it positively correlated with more political stability, voice and accountability, uh, citizen empowerment, and then did not correlate in any of the Islamic ones. None of the measures correlated with Islamic societies. And he said it was actually pointing in the opposite direction. It was just in the non-significant range. Uh, but still, it was a slight, slight negative correlation. So, yeah, this actually manifests in reality. It's, it's been documented. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the uh, study, just the study is the role of Protestant and democratic consolidation among traditional states by Roland to Salem. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we're pretty much done with the with the video that we were watching. There's just Hatun here speaking with her strong Turkish accent. Uh, <laughs> Hatun! Yeah. Hey, yeah. IP, just so you know, uh, uh, AP hates anyone with a Turkish accent. <laughs> <laughs> He does. Anytime he's like, ah, someone who has a Turkish accent. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's just it's enough feelings with me. It was disgusting to hear such a video where young generation of ideology simply talking about you can have the second wife. I don't understand how you think, David, how you think Turkish accent and Russian accent sound the same. Not there's, from, a, there's a clear difference. Not here. from her, from those other dudes who are like, <laughs> Those guys were like, Ali Dawa, are you ready to answer questions <laughs> as we all drink the Russian vodka here, right? <laughs> That's how those... Uh, anyway, I guess we're done with this one, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and well, now we can come to my favorite section. Super Chats. Uh... <laughs> Super chats. The man said, sorry, kind of unrelated. I uh, recently saw, okay, so if it's unrelated, I'm not reading it. Uh, just kidding. Uh, recently saw the Capturing Christianity stream. Yeah. With David yeah. saying Surah 4157 doesn't mean Jesus was never crucified. What do IP and AP think of this? Uh, let, 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 me, let me qualify that. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not what the Surah means. I'm saying that if you read Surah 4, 157 in the context of other Quran verses, which can give you a very, very different understanding, then it starts to look like maybe it doesn't. So, uh, you know, verses like Surah, Surah 8, verse 17 and so on. If you read 4, 157 immediately after reading Surah 355, 817 and so on, a bunch of other verses that give you a different understanding, you can interpret it that way. So it's basically, you can allow the Quran to interpret the Quran. And the, 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 overarching, the overarching idea here would be, you only have one verse to go on. So if you, if you can interpret that one verse in multiple different ways, in light of other things you're reading, yes, you can read that verse in light of later uh, Muslim commentary. If you read it in light of later Sunni Islamic commentaries, you'd go with substitution theory because that's what those commentaries say, even though they contradict each other and, and don't have any sort of authoritative content to them. Or you could just read the verse on its own, not interpret it in light of everything, in light of anything else. You don't get substitution theory, but if you're just reading it, you would think it's somehow denying Jesus' uh, crucifixion and death. That's if you just read the verse. But if you read it in light of other Quran verses, which say things like, 
um, you know, it's not you who killed these people in battle. It was Allah, Allah using you as an instrument. So you didn't kill, you didn't kill the guy you just stabbed in the throat with a sword. You didn't kill him. Allah did it through you. Then you can read this. You can read 4, 157 as saying the Jews didn't really do it. It was, it was, it was Allah using them to do something else. So the point is the verse is hopelessly unclear. It is open to multiple different ways of interpreting it. And that I don't see, I don't see a way around, but yeah, it's, it's one verse, but yeah. What, what do you guys think? Uh, that's true. Uh, so my, my stance on this, we recently talked about this when we were live on David's channel. Uh, my stance would still be that you can you can understand it uh, within a different context in a different, different way. And you, you could say it doesn't deny the crucifixion. Uh, but as I see it, what happened there is just that the Quran gets something wrong and actually really denies the crucifixion based on um heretical pre-islamic christian ideas like I don't gnostic know, texts gnostic or gnostic texts, texts uh yeah. heresies within arabia that claim that jesus was not really crucified but he was only crucified uh he, he was only he was replaced that there was a substitution or it was just a uh i don't know an illusion and islam ignorantly adopts this idea of substitution or illusion from those Christians without knowing what it actually does, because those Christians believe that Jesus is God and cannot die, which is why he's substituted or or, the, or it's an illusion. Islam adopts this idea without knowing why they believe such a thing and then later tries to somehow uh, you know, make sense of it. And later Muslim apologists try to make sense of it, Muslim scholars try to make sense of it and then create alternative stories of it. But I think it's just a giant mess coming out of ignorance still. Yeah, and just let me add, just let me add real quick. Um, you Muslims who are watching, saying that Surah four verse one fifty seven may not actually be denying the crucifixion. That's that's to help you, right? That's to help you. As <laughs> as AP just as AP just pointed out, if Surah four verse one fifty seven is saying what most Muslims think it says, then it is very clear to us, to non Muslims who are familiar with the Gnostic and Docetus uh, teachings that the author of the Quran was stealing ideas from heretical Christian weirdos oh, yeah. who, 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 who were, fur they were further away from Islam than Christians are, right? They're, these guys were further away from Islam. And, and if 4157 means what you think it means, then it's clear to us, there's no way the Quran is from God because you're stealing, you're stealing weird ideas from really, really weird groups. So <laughs> it's actually to your benefit. It's to your benefit to say, actually, the Quran isn't denying the crucifixion of Jesus. It's not using the later commentators stole these uh, Gnostic and Docetus ideas in their interpretation of the verse. But the verse should, this is, I'm saying what you should be saying, the verse should be interpreted in light of other Quran verses like 817. You should be interpreted that way. And that way we don't end up with this absurd, idiotic plagiarism of weird sources. Do you have 24 yeah, well, hours to think about this and get back to us? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, IP. No, I was going to say, denying the crucifixion of Jesus is just, uh, it's, it's, it's historically untenable in so many ways. I mean, I remember John Dominic Cross had saying, like, it's just one of the most surest things we know about history, that Jesus was crucified. He was writing like, even if we didn't have any Christian writings, we would know that there was some guy named Jesus who started a religious movement and he was crucified. It's just one of the surest facts in history. Yeah, that's also what Bart Ehrman said in response to uh, to Muslims like Mohammed Hijab um, saying that Jesus was not crucified and he was just, he was just, yeah, no, nah, he was not having it, <laughs> not having it at all. In fact, there was, there was this very funny video that I remember um, of Bart Ehrman uh, when he interacted with with Muslim apologists who were asking questions about these things, which I still find incredibly funny. Uh, let's quickly look at that here. What does it mean to be unreliable? <laughs> Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of uh, interest in the community, and many Muslims feel that well, your conclusions or historical conclusions of who Jesus Christ is is more commensurate with the Muslim uh, idea than it is with uh, the Christian one. I, I wouldn't say that they line up well with the uh, Muslim view. <laughs> I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. I'm not interested in whether Jesus was the son of God because I don't think there was a God. And so my understanding is that your conclusion is that Jesus Christ was a messianic prophet. 
I think he, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Uh, I, I, I think that that's historically right. <laughs> you know, I think that all of these gospel <laughs> authors, I think all of them think that in some sense, Jesus is God. If you think that the Bible cannot have any mistakes in it, if you're shown a mistake and you just refuse to admit it's a mistake, you think either it can be reconciled in some way or that there's something we just don't understand about it or, you know, we have, and, and. <laughs> in the bottom. <promise. laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, in case you're wondering, yeah. Mike, why he's laughing so much is because I put it together and cut it down. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I love the. I, I get this crap. I saw Zucky or Nike like, argue like, you know, I love Jesus more than Christians because Jesus always prayed on his face and I always pray on my face and I'm circumcised. Jesus was circumcised. I'm like, like Mark 11, for example, talks about Jesus says like, when you pray standing, say dot, 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 dot. It's like Jesus did not teach. You got to pray a certain way. I mean, he taught you got to be baptized. You got to take communion. You got to pray, but you don't have to pray in a certain way. So it's like, no, I don't know where these guys get this idea that the Jesus of the Gospels is more like the Jesus in the Quran. That's just not the that, case. That, that's what we talked about earlier, because in, in John, you even see, and, and Jesus looked up to heaven and said, right? So so <laughs> there he's there he's praying, looking up to heaven. But it's, it's what we said before. They will read an entire text and only fixate on the things. Oh, look, here's a scene where Jesus bowed down. You see, that's like it's love. And then, but then they'll leave out what he said. And he immediately says, Father. Right. Yeah. <laughs> even, even, even in the Lord's prayer, our father. Right. And according to the Quran, Allah is a father to no one, not in any sense. And so it's just it's just horrible. I mean, they, they can literally quote a verse without finishing the verse, because the ver if they finish the verse, it will contradict Islam. So they have mm -hmm. to only like quote the first part of the verse and say, you say this supports Islam. OK, finish the verse that destroys Islam. <laughs> no, the, the second part of the verse is corrupt. Right. It's, it's just this insane stuff. It's funny you bring this up. Um speaking of the different senses in which father could be applied or children could be applied the quran even reprimands jews and christians for referring to themselves as uh as children of god right mm -hmm. yeah interesting yeah. stuff interesting. Yeah. very very interesting stuff. um that one gamer said but ip what color is your bugatti cholo <laughs> <laughs> uh, lol yeah. just kidding love the content god bless all of you thank you very much yeah, I, uh, that, that, that one gamer, you gotta you gotta bother Tim you gotta bother uh Tim Pool again because he this guy sent a super chat into Tim Pool about having me come on Tim Pool's podcast. Uh so really appreciated that one gamer. Um still haven't oh, heard yeah. anything yet though. I did try reaching out to them the only way I knew how, but yeah, it'd be awesome to get on Tim Pool. Oh, get, hey, this, hey, hey, IP, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, I recently saw a Tim Pool uh -huh. clip where he was sitting down with his little uh, group, and he he just goes, do you think society would be better if everyone just converted to, to Christianity? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone everyone there was like, yep, given the, right, given the way things are going, yep, uh-huh. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, stuff. you know, this is, this is actually something to talk about because Daniel always – says the like Daniel Hakikishu says like liberalism is destroying religion. He doesn't realize that liberalism, mo modern secular liberalism is a, is as Charles Taylor says, it's a corruption of values they got in Christianity. So some people were like, we want a secular society with uh, some of the values we get from Christianity. We're going to call it that. So when he's constantly like in debates with you, like, you know, saying like you've abandoned your Christian values. No, a uh, modern society as scholars like Tom Holland, Rodney Stark, Robert Woodbury will point out modern society came out of a Christian culture. It is be, it is, it has gone in ways that is far more secular. It has gone in ways that I would disagree with in a lot of ways, but it still has this, this Christian roots to it that it came out of. And so, yeah, it's a lot of the values you see that, uh, uh in society that he argues against, they came out of Christianity. Christianity is not diet Islam. It's, vehemently opposed to a lot of the values we've seen in Islam. There is overlap, sure, but <laughs> it, Christianity is more like a revolutionary idea. It's about, it was, a, it came out of this idea, like in the Roman Empire, we're going to destroy and take down systems and institutions that don't prize care, that don't prize fairness and equality, and even liberty for that matter, and they need to be destroyed and be replaced with ones that do prize those type of things. And so, yeah, yeah, this is why we got to where we are today in a lot of ways. Ch Chesterton, Chesterton said that, uh, uh, Western society is, uh, I, he called it up. He said, Christian values. Go oh, no, he froze. Yeah. Who froze? He was going to say you froze. something. 
He was going to oh, say about, something useless. He was about to say the quote and he froze. He said, he said uh, yeah, Chesterton called it a Western society, Christian values gone mad. Uh, mm -hmm. So the idea yeah. is the idea is you used to have this foundation. Here's why we believe these things. And this leads to all these all these certain values out here. And then you can you can say, hey, let's throw out the, the basis for these things. And now you've just got these sort of values. But Chester's point was like now they're detached from each other and they become like mm -hmm. their idols in themselves. And so Daniel sees it. He says, oh, you're saying the same thing that the civilization that Christianity influenced said Therefore, you're stealing. You're just stealing the idea from from this non-Christian thing, and you're just siding with them, not realizing, hey, there, these things are connected, and we can agree on a lot of the same things because we had sort of a common a common background. Yep. That we can we can agree on certain things. So you can have an atheist, a Jew, a Christian, even a Muslim who's been influenced by. Uh, mm -hmm. by the same by the same system and we can all be on the same page about certain things and if you come along and say something wildly different and we all say whoa that's horrifying you say ah you're all just copying that thing no <laughs> no where yeah. you get hey, it's like stupid AP, thing yeah you should uh you should reach out to the historian tom holland because he's written books on christianity and islam and oh yeah he compares yeah, the you know it'd be an interesting conversation yeah with him, you being an ex-muslim and he being a yeah, atheist I, historian who's written on both of them I'm aware of, of him. I never thought about reaching out. I've, I've not read one of his books yet. I got oh. one of his books about uh, Christianity and Islam. I haven't read it yet. That's why you're still an atheist. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. You read one of Tom Holland's book, you're going to be a Christian overnight, buddy. <laughs> yeah, most likely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David, with an AP, when will you be at TimCast? Hey, you just brought up TimCast. That's funny. This is I, I have no desire to go on anyone's <clears throat> stuff at all. Uh, I ba I basically do stuff with with like my friends because I, I I don't know I choose to interact with people I I get along with. Uh, well, I don't I don't like Tim Pool honestly. I think uh, I think he's kind of an idiot. And <laughs> good way wow. to get it. good way to get on the show, AP. Good way. <laughs> you ruined it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but this is just what I'm saying. It's not what Mike here is thinking. So he should still be invited to the show. Um, no, I, I don't. I don't agree with with much of stuff that he says. I think he uh, does a lot of um, fallacious blanket statement judgment of uh, the other side of the political spectrum and stuff like that. I just, I just don't like it. Uh, same thing on the on the opposite side of the political spectrum. Lots of speakers do the same very thing, and I just. I don't. I don't really like the style. AP AP is just mad because Tim Pool believes in God. <laughs> AP doesn't no. want to interact with him because he believes in God. Nah, nah. Uh, but yeah, nah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I would ever do there if I went there. You get, well, I mean, you get, a, you get humiliated. That's what. <laughs> I wouldn't go on and talk about politics because that's. I don't want to do that. He. Want, I, it was a possibility of me coming on his Culture Wars podcast. We just talk about culture and religion and that kind of thing, and that's what I would want to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the man said, "What's the most plausible argument for Islam? Everybody hates Islam, therefore it's true." That's <laughs> <laughs> that's. Uh, I've seen them make that argument. I know they do. It. I'm not. I'm not making it up. That's what they do all the time. <laughs> uh, what is your answer, David? What is your answer, IP? Um, it, it's it's a really weird situation. Like. I mean, at the end of the day, you do need like this generic watered down idea of, hey, don't you believe in submission to God, right? Don't you believe in submission to God? Well, Islam is just a religion of submission to God. And you kind of have to keep it at that level. If you're just saying, hey, there's a creator and you need to submit to him. And Islam is the religion of submission to him, something like that. Uh, but it's, it's the, the moment you start going to the rest of Islam, it turns into a giant mess. So I, I, I think you, I, it's like you'd have to go with a loosely Quran only type Islam and just say, Hey, there's a creator. Look at, look at, look at the world. There's obviously a creator. Now you want to submit to God, something like that. But I mean, the, the moment you get into any specific arguments for a more robust version of Islam, it, it starts falling apart. And, and when does it not rely on deception? I mean, if you're saying, hey, Muhammad's in the Bible, when 
according to the Bible, Muhammad is like the paradigm example of what a false prophet would be. Like, how do you <laughs> how do you defend that with a straight with a straight face? How do you say there's there's only one Quran been perfectly preserved right down to the letter from the time of Muhammad? Everything involves lies. Like it's all it's all lies. So that kind of that kind of tells you something about the religion and what it's got going for it when every argument that's used to defend it beyond a kind of mere theism uh, ends in, I mean, requires deception in, in order to even make the case. Yeah, uh, I want to add about, about uh, the Tim Pool thing earlier. People are making comments about it now, but um, I find it very funny. There was this, there was this moment just years ago where he was uh, he was basically fear mongering and saying, uh, "Oh no, guys, it's it's about to it's about to go really really bad. Society is cracking. There's going to be a civil war soon uh, if, if things are not uh, fixed." And I oh, just see that sentiment whenever I, I, I look at Tim Pool. Look at AP. Th this guy, oh, if we don't stop Islam, it's going to destroy society and lead to wars <laughs> and stuff. He, he's the same exact. He's just using different ingredients, same recipe, yeah. different ingredients. And then, of course, he hates everyone who he's competing with <laughs> at the Bake Off. Come on. I don't, I don't even think. Stop, Islam hate, will stop, hating on, stop hating on everyone who's just more popular than you. I think Islam is way too stupid to, to put it to, to put Western society in danger. I think uh, I don't, I don't think Islam like an Islamic state will ever really threaten the West again. Yeah, and I yeah. think it has everything to do with the United States. Mm -hmm. People don't realize the United States is not, is very powerful because of our geography alone. Geography makes the U S O P we have two things uh, among many other growing uh, many other um, edges, but two big edges are the Mississippi chain of rivers. It's the longest network of rivers that's steady flowing. That's steady flowing. It essentially turns cities like Cincinnati and Pittsburgh into port cities, like on the ocean, because they have these rivers. You can float goods up and down quite easily all the way to the coast. It's just a natural highway system that runs through the main continental U.S. But right through this big river system, you have the Great Plains where you can, it's the largest arable land uh, anywhere on earth for growing food. So you can grow enough food in the Great Plains to feed a billion people. And you got this a water highway system that runs right through it for easily transporting goods and out. Trade is what makes nations powerful. The United States is just the, the geography allows us to just be massively overpowered in trade and transporting goods. No nation will ever compete with us on this because we just we can just grow wealth so much faster. I mean, people were about rising China. China's got nothing compared to this. It's United States geography just makes us overpowered. And that's not even including the oil, the natural gas reserves, the importance of Anchorage, Alaska in terms of trade, the unique uh, soil on the California coast, the um, indents like the Chesapeake Bay, the San Francisco Bay, the network of barrier islands around the East Coast. It also makes for transporting goods easier. The U.S. is just massively overpowered in terms of geography. Hey, hey, hey Pay, you waiting for a, a tr Donald Trump 2024 sign to come up uh, behind behind IP here? Oh, come on. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. America, we got it all. We got all the, <laughs> we got, we got the rivers. Everyone's jealous of our rivers. Have best you seen rivers. Our, have you seen our rivers. We got the best rivers. I invented the rivers. I'm the one who made the rivers here. Uh, everyone knows that. That's why I'm the best ever. Yeah. So, so, so uh, I, I guess what IP is saying here is uh, if, if the United States converted to Islam, then Islam would take over the world. Oh, yeah. It would be very, very powerful nation. Yes, it, regardless of who controls this landmass, it'd be super powerful. Absolutely. I have a beard. He doesn't. <laughs> I don't understand what this guy is talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. It's just a good vibration. Yeah. You, you guys are too uh, too young for that. But that's Marky Mark back before he was Mark Wahlberg. Oh, really? That's fine. Yeah, he was a rapper. Oh yeah, I, I, heard, I heard that. I heard that. Every yeah. time I hear that, I laugh. Every time I hear that, yeah. I just remember him from the from the TED movies, which I found funny at some point in time. Uh, and I already got that. Mm -hmm. By the way, recently found out the nun was apocrypha too. The nun. The nun. I don't know if he's talking about. In Christianity, or the nun, as in a, uh, like the nun, the whale. Oh, the the nun. Oh. Yeah, the nun with the whale, and <laughs> uh, it sits at the bottom of everything—fish or whale. 
Okay, so when you when you say apocrypha, are you talking about how that is um, Abrahamic apocrypha, or, do, or are you talking? About I, I don't. I don't know what this person is talking about. I don't know if he's talking about a nun, like you would see a nun in uh -huh, a convent uh -huh. or something like that. <laughs> and he's saying that's apocryphal, or if he's saying that in the Quran when it refers to the nun. And okay, okay, but even if it's the nun, even if it's the Quranic nun, um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the person here is intending because yeah, the nun. Uh, the whale. From, he says in the comment from, section, he says yeah. the whale. Okay, the whale comes okay. from uh, comes from uh, apparently barely uh, reliable hadith. I would say I want to be very fair here. I would say it is um, it is not considered a very reliable um, source of hadith on what Muhammad actually believed and actually mm -hmm. preached. There are some traditions, some weak traditions, and um, and some interpretations and biographies which mention that uh, that the Muslims believed in a whale that carries the world on its back. Uh, it is just impossible for us to verify if that whole idea is authentic or not, but it seems plausible within the narrative of, of the Quran when it says that Allah, you know, created the earth and then uh, put mountains on it to prevent it from shaking, and <laughs> and it's it, it's it starts a whole chapter with by the noon and the pen and stuff like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say? You want to? You are dying to say something. No, no, I agree. I mean, you have you have a bunch of commentaries that supposedly go back to companions of Muhammad, saying that this nun refers to this fish or whale. That everything is is you know everything's on its back, and so that that's what happens. This thing gets agitated, starts flopping around. That's where Earth get. Or that's where earthquakes come from. That's why you need the mountains put down like tent pegs to hold everything nice and steady. So you do get this ridiculous picture. But yes, once you understand that these guys were making up, making up connections that go supposedly go back to Muhammad's companions for justification for their later ideas, everything's in question. You don't you don't know what actually goes back to Muhammad. So entirely plausible. Muhammad did believe idiotic nonsense like that. But Muslim, Muslims also made up tons of <laughs> Muslims also made up tons of stuff. So hard hard to call. Yeah, yeah, hard, hard to call. I brought this up once in my response to Muhammad Hijab because he was kind of uh, going to secondary sources and claiming that the early Muslims knew the earth was around. And and I basically argued, I said, if you want to take these unreliable secondary sources cited by people later uh, that early Muslims believed the earth was around, then how about I go back and take some other sources? Which Yeah, uh, Ibn, Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas yeah, said, said with, the, seven, the, seven yeah. earth, the seven earths are all flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about I go back and, and pick these sources, which say uh, a lot of terrible things? Yeah. Um, sorry, I saw I just did that. Uh, when you take 4157 and you juxtapose it with the fact that Islam is borrowing from apocrypha, it makes far more sense that it is arguing substitution. Yeah, that's that's how I see it. That's basically how I see it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. With me again, this is why I don't say that Surah 4157 is saying this or that. It's for you Muslims. If you claim that it's supporting substitution, then these Gnostic and Docetist ideas are entering Islam at the level of the Quran and you got problems. Yeah. Um, if you want to say, no, the ideas entered at the, at the level of the commentaries and it's not actually in the Quran, then you don't have that. You don't have that as a problem for the Quran. Uh, yeah. You have it for later commentators. And so you have the, the fact that your, your later commentators are distorting everything because they're liars. So take your pick. Yeah, what makes it additionally problematic is that the Quran also um, repeats a lot of stories that it takes from later uh, heretical Christian sources, such as that uh, that that Jesus spoke um, as a little baby and mm -hmm. gave them that's, preached to them. That's from uh, the infancy gospel of Thomas. So. Yeah, it's from an infancy gospel. Uh, another also, story where he where he uh, has these um, these 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 inanimate birds uh that he gives life to and breathes infancy life into it and makes them makes them fly also comes from the infancy gospel which also is a story that implies that he is god <laughs> so it doesn't yeah. actually make sense that to include that into the quran uh but yeah all of that is just problematic and just points at plagiarism on and 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 on there there is a because it, it, the the quran repeatedly not only quotes these these weird uh late christian fabrications uh it also repeatedly quotes like passages of the talmud yeah. and so like the the story of uh uh cain and abel and mm. the uh the the bird and so on and then even uh uh surah 5 verse 32 if anyone kills a man it's as if he's killed all mankind that's a quotation 
from the Talmud. Yeah. And that's that's what's ironic about these uh, these debates like IP was having and like I was having where the, these guys are actually appealing to the Talmud, which on a scale <laughs> on a scale of one to ten is a is of zero significance for Christians. The only relevance of the Talmud is, hey, Jewish rabbis at a certain time interpreted certain things along those lines. That's that's no there's nothing authoritative about that for us. But in Islam, since Allah in his Quran repeatedly quotes the Talmud and treats it as if it's the same thing as the Torah, the Talmud is actually has a lot more significance for Muslims than it does than it ever would for, for Christians. They also don't understand the Talmud. Uh, yeah, they don't know what it is. It's the same thing. No. He, he keeps saying the Talmud says this, so why don't you follow this? Implying that... Uh, that people who believe in the Talmud or people who respect the Talmud as a as a scripture are required to follow everything the Talmud says. Word you for can't. You which can't. Doesn't because, even make yeah. sense. Because it's, 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 impo debate. it's impossible. You'll you'll <laughs> you'll read you'll read these rabbinic commentaries and they'll give you five different understandings of a verse. Yeah. You you can't say, oh, I'm bound by all of those. They they contradict each other. Well, I mean, that's the Talmud is debates. It's disagreements with each other and them having different interpretations of 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 uh, of, of the Torah and Jewish beliefs. Yeah. You it Word yeah, it, it, it would it would sense. it would be like it would be like taking all Muslim commentaries that have ever been written on what the Quran means, and even though tons of these con tons of these interpretations contradict each other, I mean, you could read a verse, and you could take someone like uh, 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 Kortabi or something like that, and he'll he'll list here are the fifteen different interpretations of this verse. But I mean, imagine taking all the Muslim commentaries that have ever been written with all their contradictory understandings of verses, and and then treating it as a unit. And then saying, oh, that says this about the Quran. Well, yeah, that would say a ton of different things about the Quran because it's a collection of, of commentaries from, from human beings. Uh, so th they treat the they, they're treating the Talmud like it's some like it's one thing and like it's authoritative divine revelation. And it's just a it's it's weird stuff, man. Well, it's, it's also late. It's not like there's yeah. there's scholars debate about if anything. They say some stuff goes back to the first century or prior, but a lot of it comes from centuries after. It's not 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 stuff that comes from the time of Jesus in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned before that he was going to do videos in the future about the sociological impact of Islam. Is he still going to? I would love to. Yeah, see. I need to do some more research on that. Um, I found some stuff. See, the thing is, you got to remember when you go into sociology and you study the sociology of religion, like. 90% of the sample sizes are Christians. Like this is because these studies are typically done in the West and these uh, researchers want to do a study. So they just go ask religious people around them to do. And so they basically, they're constantly sampling Christians. There's not been a lot of research done on Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's very kind of hard. I'm collecting things, um, leaning in that direction, but I'd like to get some more. I mean, I did a video titled Is Christianity Harmful? It's 51 minutes and I go over all the studies and that's because hundreds of studies have been done. Uh, when I get to the video on Islam, I'm not going to have nearly that much because it just hasn't been studied that much. Uh, but I mean, I'm finding some positive things, but there's also a lot of very negative things. Uh, surprisingly, Daniel gave me some interesting sources I can use for that, like M. Stephen Fish's book. Uh, so, I mean, there's stuff I can use. I just got to keep collecting. More. Yeah, just so you know, but given, given the research you've already done, should be very... I mean, pretty straightforward to put together videos like uh, on like the the impact of polygamy in a society or something like that. Yeah. These little these little standalone videos and so on that 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 operate as handy resources for someone who is not familiar with those. But you know, they've just in, they've just started a discussion with their Muslim friend and they bring up uh, you know, hey, look at what these Dawa guys are saying about secret second wives and so on. They go, <laughs> ah, but but that's good for society, and so it's good to actually have something handy. Uh, yeah, video form. I do want to do a video on polygamy soon. I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna get it all. I gotta, it's on the list. It's just, it's another video I gotta get to. Uh, Warden said, Why is Muhammad Golden Shahrus Haji flexing muscles? Because he's looking for more people who would accept golden showers for a minute. Uh, that's probably <laughs> IP has no idea what we're talking about. No, <laughs> yeah. no what, what one day Muhammad Hijab showed up in the chat and started, uh, and it, you know, he had, he had the check mark beside his name, so it's actually him. And wow. he starts, he starts just babbling about all this sick golden showers stuff. And uh, that was that was right after he do. challenged me to a debate, and we had this whole thing going on, this drama. And David and I went live and started talking about him on a stream where we were originally supposed to talk about uh, Muhammad the prophet. And then he came on our stream 
because he was angry at me and started ranting about <laughs> golden shower and sex. And yeah, he was saying sick stuff. And then <laughs> I, I, I was getting messages from people like, I didn't even know what some of this stuff was until I Googled it. And then the pictures popped up and now I have to wash my eyeballs out. But it's like, <laughs> why, is this, why is this guy the expert, the world's leading authority on all this sick perverted stuff on uh, the internet? Weird that's stuff. So funny, man. Anyway, that, that, champion, champions of Dawa. That is so funny. I want to just uh, give Mike here uh, just a taste of, not of golden shower, but of. Uh, no, you, you better not. I don't want to see that. Here, here's here's Mohammed Hijab. <laughs> <laughs> These are the messages we're getting. You wow. two can play with each other. Get on your knees for David Wood, Gimp. David Wood can give you a golden shower. <laughs> Go ahead and give David Wood what he wants. Let David Wood give you a golden shower. Gimp, get on your knees for your master, boy. You can suck that. Golden shower from your master. I know you need a slave master. Golden shower. Gimp, get on your knees for your master. Let him slap your face, you fiend. <laughs> So uh, I... <laughs> you starting to realize you starting to realize who you're getting involved with uh, dealing with these uh, dais. I have I never felt more civilized in my life. <laughs> oh boy, this never gets old. Now you're seeing the power yeah. of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm a, oh, I'm boy. a, I'm gonna pray tonight and feel better. Oh my goodness, I need to <laughs> pray all that out of my system. <laughs> uh ip has clearly read thomas sowell awesome oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah thomas Sowell's one of my greatest one of my favorite political philosophers yeah hope you see my super chat appreciation hope you see I hope see. you see oh hope you see yeah, I, I, yeah. I, my brain is fried um <laughs> Now I get the joke. Loki said, thoughts on the halal method of slaughter. Animal remains alive where its throat is cut and forced to bleed out till blood drains. Animal suffers. Yeah, so Muslims are supposed to... Um, my, my parents, who were very religious, were very much against the modern practices of uh, numbing or putting the animal to sleep. And it was, it was supposed to be done the traditional way. Otherwise, it is not halal, where you hold the animal and then uh, cut the throat and let, let it bleed out and suffer and die and only then it's halal and you can eat it and all that which is interesting mm. stuff yeah but yeah yeah nobody yeah, cares I, it's just animals well i mean modern modern cultures it's, it's a lot less cruelty I, I watched the video on it like they put this like head thing on the cow and it doesn't feel any pain like just like some sort of thing goes on the head boom yeah out. yeah 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 i'd be in suffering yeah i'd be in favor of as little suffering as possible. Agreed. I would be in favor of as much suffering as possible. That's what IP IP wants to slowly torture the cow to death over a period of two years. Yeah. IP <laughs> IP's I, no, I mean uh, AP AP's like no, you already said IP. Yeah. <laughs> a, 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 AP's like hey, I could just keep this cow alive and just cut out a steak every once in a while. <laughs> It's like a horrible, horrible person. Oh my god, wow. Uh, Saint Travel, my miracle worker said, A positive prophet, Muslim birth rate is double Christian atheist secular, as they are too busy arguing planet overpopulation. Result is that viewpoint will take over Western states eventually. I don't think so. No, okay, yeah, so there's yeah. a oh, there's yeah, a book I could say, you know, there's a book called Shall the Religious Inherit the Earth, and by Eric Kaufman, he's a sociologist, and he, he basically points out that, um, no, I mean, yeah, atheists do have far less children than most people do it's just it's statistical just it is and but a lot they're, of they're, they're just way less yeah. they don't have as much sex because they're, they're they're horribly unattractive <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah 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 so sociologically um, speaking you got to put this in this perspective uh poorer countries tend to have more children because children are sort of like an insurance plan in more developed cu cultures you have less children because the way the economies change uh, children become more liability. They they become more expensive. Whereas in poorer countries, you sort of need them to eventually be your retirement plan. So you know, if you go to you know Africa, they have more children than they do in Europe. It's so that's this kind of thing. So uh, typically, what happens is is if if other countries did get more wealthy, they would just start having less children. So if Muslim countries got wealthier, they would have less children. This is just the way societies work. So the book Shall the Religious Inherit the Earth basically says statistically we're going to be 
not the same. The, Christ, the Christianity is still going to grow based on birth rates. Same with Islam. It's not like that. For example, my pastor, he's about to have his 12th kid. Okay. And like it, a lot of the people at the, the church I attend, they have a lot of kids. It's uh, the Catholic church still, uh, for example, is, is one of the organizations out there that outlaws uh, contraception. So when I went to a Catholic conference in uh, January, they, there was children everywhere because they have so many children. It's just everywhere. Like in the church I attend, children everywhere as well. Uh, so a lot of the denominations like Catholic, uh, I don't think England England does, but I knew Lutheran strongly condemns uh, or strongly for, like says you know, shies away from contraception. I don't think they outright condemn it like Catholics do. But a lot of these uh, more traditional churches, they're still having a lot of children. So, uh, yeah, there are less children now have, having in the West, but this has a lot to do more with prosperity than it has to do with religion. If, you know, the Islamic uh, states became wealthier, you would see less children as well. But you also have to take into account a lot of these uh, countries like, um, you know, throughout northern Africa and in the Middle East. Uh, there's also a higher death rates of people in those countries. They have higher people immigrating out of those countries and they go to the West. And when they do... Uh, graphically speaking, a lot of them just become atheists when they move to Europe or they become Christian in, in some ways. Lately, the trend has been uh, in the past decade has been more atheists as immigrants move into Europe. They tend to become more atheists. Those are the general trends. But Kaufman's book kind of points out that trend is not sustainable. We will see return to more religious uh, societies in the future, Christian and Muslim in the long run. So uh, there's a lot more factors going into these kinds of things we need to think about. Bye bye, atheists. You're about yeah. to be outnumbered. Yes, you're, you're going to die. Um, <laughs> yes, so the, the 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 general thing to keep in mind because you know you, you did have you even had a Pew Research study that Muslims like to like to cite about Islam being the fastest growing religion in the world and so on. Um, that was that they even say in that report that it was based on birth rates. Um, yeah. So yeah, so. In, in order to say Islam has the highest birth rates and therefore Islam will take over the world, you have to assume that there's nothing that's going to offset that or ever change. And some of the yeah. things that change is as uh, culture, I mean, as societies, countries modernize and so on, birth rates tend to drop. So yeah. that will affect it. And also you're dealing with this this. Uh, this geometric growth of the avalanche of apostasy, where a few it's years ago, be an a, few, yeah, a few years ago, it was 24% of Muslim youth leaving Islam, but that's been accelerating. So, I mean, mm -hmm. how do how are birth rates going to he, going to help you when you when you get to an apostasy rate of 50% or 60% yeah. or 70%? It's going to be so, a tsunami, yeah. an avalanche. And so, all those That's people, some of those, that. some of those people might convert to atheism, but they'll just die out eventually. And so Christians, we, we win. Yeah. Atheists usually, <laughs> atheists usually die. So that's the thing. Uh, WX, WLZ said, uh, saw a study about depression in the Middle East. Women have doubled the depression rates as men and many countries have higher depression rates than West. I never what? saw that. I just looked it up and I'm actually seeing the studies now. There are multiple studies which show that uh, huh. that women in yeah. the Middle East have surprisingly high depression rates. Well, that's, that because they're, that's, because they're, that's because they're weak. You see? <laughs> they've, been, they, yeah. they've, been, they've been brainwashed by the West into being depressed if they just do what the Quran says. I'd yeah. like to see those studies if you can send them to me. But uh, uh, that lines with uh, Stephen Fish's work where he points out that in the Middle East, women have, there's higher rates of gender inequality. So women have lower life expectancies, lower education, lower literacy rates, I think you mentioned. Uh, and so that would align with that as well. I mean, and we know that education correlates with lower depression. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. First, the rate of the right of depression may not be necessarily unique. Uh, depression. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that stuff. It's interesting. Uh, Karen Fisher said, do you think this is a fulfillment of Isaiah 4.1? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah, IP. Yeah, IP. Uh, <laughs> uh, Why? What is Isaiah 4.1? Uh, in that day, seven women will take hold of one man and say, we will eat our own food and provide our own clothes and only let us be called by your name. Take away our disgrace is what it says. Oh. So oh, I'm very skeptical of reading these things. Uh, I mean, a lot of what they're doing in the Old Testament is not so much prophecy for future. Uh, it's a lot. Of, a lot of this stuff is conditional. A lot of this stuff is more warning than prophecy. Uh, check out a video I did back in March on the conditional nature of prophecy. 
in the Bible. It sounds really um, exciting. It is very exciting, David. Uh, it's it's it, it's title was Jesus a failed apocalyptic prophet. So there, it's like that. Uh, but I I don't know. I'm very skeptical of reading that. Wait, of these hey, kind hey, of things. you hear him? He said prophet. <laughs> you see, he's agreeing with Islam. That's what they, <laughs> that's what they do with Ehrman when he says that Jesus was an apocalyptic prophet. They say, ah, you said prophet, right? Not not realize it like apocalyptic 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 prophets, like the end is near, the end is near. That's okay. because they don't know what the word prophet yeah. actually means. They just use it as a thing for their prophets. Yeah, so it, going with what Bart Ehrman thinks about Jesus does not give you uh, an Islamic prophet, but they think that's what he's saying. Uh, yeah. Read stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and looking, looking at this context, I don't know, because you read right after that, in that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of, fruit of the land shall be the pride and the honor of the survivors of Israel. And he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem. That's verse two and three. I mean, so seven women, women will take hold of a man and say, we will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. He seems to be saying this is a good thing. I mean, if you read the next two verses, like this is supposed to be a good thing for the women. They can just provide their own food and clothes. So Maybe it's like, yeah, this is about creative times of equality. I don't know. I, I would need to read some commentaries on this before. I How dare you say something decisions. good about women? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you uh, no. Oh, wait. Where do you guys stand in the global overpopulation versus our global underpopulation future? There are many smart people on either side of the bit. I would like to leave it to the experts. Um, I have looked a little bit into that. Um, I think... Uh, so I think the population is supposed to peak at some point in the next 100 years and then start to slowly decline. I mean, China is already supposed to have a uh, declining population sometime after 2030 and before 2040, I believe. So, you know, this I know this because I was, I was listening to some military experts about the, attacking Taiwan. They got like seven years before they start having a declining economy. So, yeah, population, I think, will decline. This is because of modernization. Uh, but I mean, I think at the same time, People are also worried there's not going to be enough jobs in the future because of automation. And I think the people that are worried about overpopulation should talk to the people who are worried about the rise of automation because maybe those problems will cancel each other out. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, you could see it both ways. You could say, hey, you know, we we have there 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 is a, a limit. There's a finite amount of resources in the world. So obviously the more. The more people you have competing for those resources, the more of a difficulty uh, you're eventually going to have. The response is we're we're nowhere near uh, running out of resources, and the, the the technology would actually increase to keep up with it. And and people are actually getting bit. Like poverty rates have been going down as as population has been growing. And the, the claim is it's the claim is basically people are the the argument for under underpopulation being the problem is you know you've got old people and we're we're able to take care of old people who retire and so on because you have enough young people entering the workforce to be ultimately taking care of these people or providing through taxes or whatever taking care of the older people if you do not have enough younger people entering the workforce then you you eventually end up with a population that's heavy, that leans towards being too old and not enough young people coming on. And and the claim is that you actually start getting like collapse of civilization in that situation. But yeah, I would I would not make a claim one way or another without yeah. studying it more. Yeah. The experts have spoken. Uh, and now let's move on to the next topic. Uh, channel for you said, I see Muhammad and Ali Dawa. Who is the third one? Oh, that was some random guy. I have no idea what that guy there was. Were there were two other guys there. There were two other guys, yeah. yeah some random guys. Four nobody men, four women. Nobody cares. About, they're not real men because it's true, equa them. true equality. Four men, four women. Yeah. Muslims have experienced a fertility decrease from 4.4 4 to mm. 2.3. Islamic countries already have below replacement levels. Uh, a good book on this topic is Religion Sudden Decline by Ronald F. Englard. The thing is, there, there, was, there was a study that I, um, I, I I barely remember this. It was many years ago, which showed that uh, that even in within the same culture, even within the same neighborhood uh, and same circumstances, a Muslim family tends to have a higher number of children than a non-Muslim, a Christian or a, uh, uh, and uh, just, you know, 
that was that, that was in that Pew Research study. They said even oh, if really? to, yeah, they said there? even if you go to specific regions where you have Christians and atheists and everyone, it's like region by region, Muslims always have the the highest birth rates. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that the birth rates have still been declining, even yeah, even you know, among yeah. Muslims. That's true. That's true. And this 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 whole idea is based on we need a, a certain high number of birth rate for a replacement population is based on older technology. That again, with the rise of automation coming out and yeah. AI there's not going to be as many jobs available and that is going to be a replacement. So I think honestly in capitalistic societies, th these are just built in uh, factors that sort of just take care of themselves. As you modernize, there's less a need for children because technology is replacing it. Uh, and it's so, a, yeah, I don't- It's very funny. Uh, Daniel Hikikichu is very obsessed with the whole um, population extinction uh, numbers required to mm -hmm. replace the population and and so on. And he even he even discussed that with me way back when I first had my first conversation with him. Uh, and I, I asked him why in the world he's even worried about this because uh, I mean he should he should not be worried about about extinction and all of that. He should be he should be worried that people believe in in Islam and become Muslims and and all of that and. Uh, he then brought up some weird objection to me, which is like, uh, would you rather want a future that is like fully technocratic and where humans are ruled by some uh, extremely problematic, uh, oppressive system where nothing is in charge anymore, nothing, uh, nothing good, nothing human That's... is in charge anymore, rather than uh, us taking control and, and implementing proper standards? And I thought, yeah. I don't know. That's I, I, would, I would rather have that's, AI that's, rule. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, always, that's always his argument. It's, hey, I don't want this dystopia. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. ah, <laughs> but you could have this other dystopia. Which, dyst <laughs> which of these two dystopias, the only possibilities, yeah. do you prefer? It's he one always or the other. Always false dichotomy. Always, oh, you don't support this? Then look what happens. Then you will have this system where people will suffer terribly and yeah. will die in the streets from you addictions. Don't, you and, don't, you don't want a world where men can beat their wives into submission <laughs> then you must be favoring the state coming in there and beating your wife into yeah. submission you it's, don't want that but it's one or the other it's one it's, or the other guys exactly he so uh, this, this whole idea of, a, of the technology being necessarily bad or it's going to lead to a dystopia is obviously fear-mongering but to yeah. give a good example think of when they came out with nuclear war warheads okay it was the end of the world we're going to annihilate each other well what ended up happening is that everyone had nuclear weapons and everyone was afraid they'd set them off. So instead of always going to war, P uh, countries started working more on negotiating, talking with one another, just to avoid nuclear war. So what was supposed to destroy us has actually led to more peace. It's one of those great ironies of history. Nuclear, every, you know, these massive superpowers having nuclear wars has caused more diplomacy because we don't want to set off the nuclear warheads. So, you know, this idea of technology is going to create this horrible dystopian state is not necessarily true. And, and that is a weird pop how... culture idea, by the way, that humans would somehow uh, uh, destroy themselves and go extinct by their own hands. That, that is, yeah. there, there is no scientific uh, agreement that that says that argues that humans would would somehow be capable of, uh, you know, making themselves ex themselves extinct through a nuclear war or anything like that. Humans would always. Uh, exist as a result after so, those things in one way or another. I'm still waiting for the uh, Trump 2024 sign to come up behind IP. Uh, Why? You, you see, he made the brilliant case. The liberals want to take away our weapons. But as IP just, <laughs> as IP just pointed out brilliantly, I mean, he probably got this from me, that uh, we all need weapons because that's that's what keeps us from, from killing ourselves. I, I, I asked ChatGPT earlier, by the way, because I saw somebody uh, ask ChatGPT to write the book of Genesis in the style of Trump. I uh -huh. went on there and, and asked it to write uh, several Quran verses and chapters in the style of Trump. At first it refused, so I had to kind of uh, find my way around it and kind of convince it and use the new ChatGPT4. Uh, and then it eventually came around and started writing in Trump style. And I was like... Just so everyone knows, this is what this is what AP now does instead of making videos. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do in my, my, my free time here. Actually, I should, I should bring something up here so that uh, David Wood can read it in his wonderful uh, Trump voice here. Uh, let's have this on here. Uh, which one do you want? Right, chapter 4, verse 34 in Trump style. Uh, what did I also say? Rights for a tub in the style of Trump. 
Right, Sarah <laughs> Bakara. Oh, here, here. Right, Sarah Bakara in the style of Trump. Here, read this, David. Uh, this is the book, folks, and it's the best book, the most tremendous book, in which there's absolutely no doubt, no doubt at all. <laughs> it's a guide for those who are conscious of Allah, who believe in the, the unseen, who perform the best prayers, nothing but the best prayers for us, and who spend from what we have provided for them. These are the best. These are the best people, the winners, the winners. <laughs> yeah, it, it just keeps doing these things. It refers to Allah as uh, the big guy. The most uh, fantastic the path. <laughs> the most fantastic path. <laughs> uh, this is Declaration of Immunity, the best immunity from Allah. <laughs> the best, the best immunity. <laughs> you made some deals, but let me tell you, not all of them were great deals. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing stuff. Frankly, frankly, yeah, <laughs> not the hey, best hey, deal. Wait. You got to. Oh, that's. I I told it to write nine verse twenty nine, which is one of my favorite ones. Uh, folks, let me tell you, you need to fight against those who don't believe in Allah. That, this wasn't that great. But They're not on good. our team. Not the yeah. best people. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Read that. What was that? Did you, was that? Just, here, nine twenty nine. Uh, they're not on our team. Yeah, that's the end of the first section there. They're not on our team, not the best people. You've got to fight against those who don't practice <laughs> the true religion, the best religion, until they pay the jizya <laughs> willingly, feel themselves subdued. We want everyone to be on the winning side. And sometimes you got to show them who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing, man. It's amazing stuff. Hey, there, there's, there's much more here. But I will keep experimenting with this and doing these very important things in my free time. Uh, Yeshua the King said, IP made a good point when he brought up uh, War Booty to Daniel. I wish he would have pressed that more. That was. Well, I ran, I ran out of time. I was, yeah. was going to. I ran out of five minutes, you know. And he also yeah, complained I mean, that this is, uh, doesn't, is not related to the topic, but I will answer it anyway, he said. Right. Yeah, it, it, it is related to the topic because we're talking about child marriage and using minors for sex and he already agreed that yes you can have sex with a girl three four five so what and he, he tried to make the moral justification for sexual slavery so what would stop a muslim man from taking a girl who has you know has very very little pubic hair and saying okay now you can i can start having sex with you at like five six seven i mean it's what's going to stop that if, if you're allowed in islam according to daniel after a war to take all the women back as, and use them as sex slaves What's going to stop them from doing it with the girls as well that to barely start in puberty? It's disgusting to think about, but that's something. And he seemed to be saying, yeah, you, of course you could do that. And I was blown away that he just outright said it. But I mean, yeah, as, as AP was saying, he's doing a great job of making Islam look bad. Yeah, but here's the issue, uh, IP. So you are against uh, against child marriage because you think it's bad. Do you also think adultery is bad? Yes, so why are you, why do you not want to ban adultery? Why do you not want to ban fornication? Why do you not want to ban masturbation? <laughs> Let's make it illegal. Anyone who masturbates goes to prison. Like this was his objection, man. Yeah, he wants to throw. <laughs> throw what what would you prefer? Because there are only two possibilities here: <laughs> a future dystopia where everyone marries uh, two and three and four year olds, or. A, a world where two and three and four year olds are all running to the closet masturbating. Which one? <laughs> it has to be one or the other. Those are the only two possibilities. Oh, it's so insane, man. What, what reason? Oh, man. That's why at the end of the debate, I pressed him on that. He's like, How are you punished these people? He didn't have a solution. He didn't know. He was like, Send him the juvie. Okay, so we're going to fill juvie up with thousands of children <laughs> who may have fooled around in their ignorance like what a, what a suggestion this is my great solution i want to throw all those teenagers all those kids in prison <laughs> Just, wow man amazing stuff didn't moses have two wives okay so, yeah i want to address this yeah uh so yes it's he did so did abraham also had multiple wives uh so did jacob here's the thing when you read biblical scholars who are writing about this they always write polygamy uh, at, in a negative light. So with Abraham it, and he takes in Hagar, uh, it causes strife between wives. With Jacob, it causes strife between sons. With Moses, it causes his relatives to come after him and it causes strife again. It's really weird that every time they write about polygamy in, in the Pentateuch, they're always painting it in a negative light. Nothing good ever comes out of it. it. Always causes strife 
between the offspring or between the wives. Also, causes also later, also later with the families of David and then Solomon. Yeah. Solomon eventually turns away from God by because he starts worshiping the gods of all his different wives and so on. It's yeah, because women. Are, it's because women are terrible. And yeah, they're evil. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta like. You you gotta look, there's a. <laughs> there's a verse in Leviticus. It's Levit Leviticus eighteen eighteen. It says you cannot take a wife and her sister. And scholars have noted that in the Hebrew, it may be an idiom. Uh, it's like you cannot take a wife and another. Uh, you compare that with a with some verses in Malachi as well as Genesis two. Uh, it seems that the authors, uh, a lot of the biblical authors, were vehemently against polygamy. They always narrated it in a negative way, and they have verses like Leviticus eighteen eighteen where they're saying you can't have a second wife. So, and then you get Jesus in the New Testament, who's like, no, no, you can male and female. That's it. Paul builds on that again: one wife, male and female. So. Yeah, the Bible is very anti-polygamy if you read it in context. And, and there's this there's this additional uh, issue of you know you have Jesus saying Moses Moses allowed that because of the hardness of your hearts. The the, mm -hmm. the, the impression you get is these are these guys are not ideal patterns of conduct. Yeah. Um, in in the Bible, I mean, prophets are very frequently messed up misfits that God uses in spite of how screwed up they are. And then the mm -hmm. Muslims who have an idea of prophets as these people that God is protecting from any sort of major uh, error or something like that, they think, oh, if you're saying a prophet did it, you're thinking that's good as gold and not not reading it like we do. Like, no, these prophets <laughs> were all screw ups. Right. It, and, yeah. and, and they are. And insofar as they are doing something bad, they are not to be imitated. Yeah, Muslims think that is an insult and a corruption, and uh, prophets cannot be, uh, cannot have done bad things, cannot have done, uh, you know, uh, things that are, that that your religion or your morals would not agree with. That is completely foreign to them. To them, prophets are completely exempt from such things. They well, they, they are not to, humans. They try to justify so much behavior that you know we can just say okay they were wrong, and then you look at Noah for example. Noah gets drunk and curses his grandson. I mean, like. How do how do they justify that? I mean, he's clearly drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, pedophilia is not about self control; it is a mental illness. A Muslim woman is prescribed to abide by that. The normal women should call the cops or wait list. I would make a distinction here, just because I want to be very particular when we talk about pedophilia. Um, it is considered in psychology. Um, it is considered that some that some people have a mental illness which makes them feel uncontrollably attracted to to minors or to children even but there is um as far as i am aware correct me if, if you have a different opinion on this you have studied this issue a lot uh, recently because you had to argue with a pedophile apologist uh -huh. IP. Uh, but uh it, it is not certain that all people who are who have a, a pedophilia issue suffer from an uncontrollable mental illness which makes them attracted to that but this is just one major aspect of certain I people think, who deal with such a mental disorder i think pedophilia is described as that way so it depends on how you define mental illness so if, if a mental illness is something that causes harm to you so like schizophrenia you're mm -hmm. you, you're going to cause harm it's uh it's going to cause a lot of issues multiple personality disorder or did uh these kinds of things so, so now some say that other things like pedophilia or mental disorder because they cause you to uh, uh, cause harm to others or you gravitate towards activity that would um, that doesn't make sense in terms of human nature. Like you can't, you you know, you know, we have we have sex with each, with men and women to, to have you know, children. But then there's pushback on that when it comes to things like homosexuality. So there is a debate on if it is should be classified as a mental disorder. However, all the researchers agree it should not be practiced because it causes active harm to the passive partner, the child involved. So like it could be a harmfully mix, mix matched neurological trait. Uh, it may not be a mental disorder. It depends on who, which researcher you're reading, but all researchers agree that this is just harmful to the younger partner. Uh, mm -hmm. This should be abolished because of that. Uh, yeah, so yeah. The, uh, the, the, the DSM-5, so that's the standard uh, That's the standard work on diagnosing mental health disorders. Uh, if you just read the criteria, of what's called pedophilic disorder, um, 
you Muhammad meets Muhammad meets those requirements. Like yeah. like they'll say, you know, uh, the the one partner has to be at least five years older than the other. In other words, it's not a nine year old boy who's attracted to a nine year old girl. You don't say, oh, he's attracted to a nine year old, therefore he's a pedophile. He's right. they're comparable age. So the guy has to be significantly uh, uh, older. Um, they'll say things like, you know, she has to be you know young enough to wear, you know, like he, he's 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 attracted to someone who's prepubescent. And they, a, after all the criteria are met, which Muhammad meets all the criteria, there are there are the qualifiers where you can fall into a category. Like some people are incestuous, right? So there's like incestuous pedophilic disorder. Those, mm. That's where people are actually attracted to their relatives who are, who are young. But then then there's the qualifier of, is it exclusive or or non-exclusive? Yeah, that's are very you, important. Are, are you just attracted to, to, to kids or are you attracted to kids and women? And so following that, uh, those criteria, Muhammad would be labeled with non-exclusive pedophilic yeah. disorder. But that, there, there, that's there a very is... important point. Uh, Muslims often say uh, his other wives were not uh, were not that young. He also married uh, older women. Well, that, that doesn't really matter. Uh, mm -hmm. it is, there is no such thing as... Uh, that, that pedophiles are exclusively interested in, in children. There are specific distinctions within pedophilia. Yeah, uh, the, the, the only additional factor where you could make an argument, um, a relevant point against that is there are exceptions. If something is completely normal in your society, then it may not be caused by a mental disorder. In other words, if you mm -hmm. things that behaviors that are caused by a mental disorder in the DSM five, you could have a society where that behavior is totally normal and adaptive in that society. And therefore they would say, oh, okay, well, if you're raised to think that that's normal behavior, you would, I mean, notice you could have, you could have in theory, you could have a society where everyone acts like they're schizophrenic, even, even if they're not right, where that behavior is considered normal and people might be, be going around acting like they that, acting like they have a problem. So someone could argue that if it was normal, I don't think we have really great case to think that marrying nine year olds was uh, normal back then. But it, it, suppose no. if you showed that and showed everyone that that, that that was completely normal at that time, then you in theory, you could say, well, Therefore, it shouldn't be labeled as a mental health disorder because it was it was normal and adaptive at that time. You'd still have the problem of, you know, the Quran is putting its stamp of approval on Muhammad's behavior. But uh, anyway, that, that's 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 where the debate. There is a thing that I learned in my um, in my abnormal psychology uh, courses, which is um, some, a useful a combination of criteria to uh, determine whether something is a mental disorder or not. And that's, uh, it's called the four D's, which is uh, dysfunction, danger, deviance, and um, I forgot what it is, but some something else, I don't know, um, distress. And uh, so based on those different, different standards, you can uh, determine if a person is, for example, suffering from a, from a disorder or not, and whether that disorder should be treated as such and diagnosed as a result even, or not. Even, uh, even in um, uh, even in the DSM five, it, it it'll it'll give like in in a when it's giving a criterion, it will say either this problem is causing you distress, so your desire for little kids is causing you distress, or you're acting on it, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. someone could act on it, and not be distressed at all. Uh, or you cannot, mm. or you cannot act on it. You actually use your self control, but it's really messing you up because you're, yeah. you know, you you really want, you really want this, and so on. So, but one uh, of those things is actually important. One of those things is deviance, and as David just brought up, uh, something can be considered normal within a society, and then somebody who practices it might not be considered, um, you know, mentally ill for doing a certain thing because it is, it is, it is, it is common in the society. But if it's not common, and some and somebody does something extremely unusual that also fits all the other criteria, that could be seen as a deviant, distressful, you know, dangerous action, and so on. Mm. Yeah. Um, man, this stream has been going on for three hours, and we yeah, still have like thousands of super chats left. Yeah, we're having this thing. We're talking about marriages, and AP's trying to ruin all our marriages by having us on all night. <laughs> oh yeah. I gotta get going soon for sure. Demon oh, wow. said not to be rude, but I think you missed one of my super chats. I asked because I wanted to figure out if the LDS Church counts as Christian. Any source on that, by the way? They they do not. Uh, the LDS does not count as Christian because they deny essential. They do they deny the Nicene Creed and essential Christian doctrines. 
Uh, they, they, in a lot of ways, traditional Mormon theology is closer to like traditional paganism than it is to Christian doctrine because God is El, who was a, a human on another planet who had appointed to Godhood and then got this planet. He didn't create the universe. Uh, and so then Jesus is just like his first spirit baby. It's, it's this weird setup and it's like, it's just so far from Orthodox Christianity. And you could also get your own planet. Christian. If you're, if you're good enough, you could maybe get your own yeah. planets and yeah. create your own beings and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. that's just, it's, it cannot be counted as Christian like Jehovah witnesses. They just, yeah. they have violated, they, they reject too many essential Christian doctrines. And so no, they cannot. Yeah. So guys, the, the, the general, the general uh, assessment usually, because you don't want to be, you don't want to be too quick to say, Oh, I disagree with this other Christian. Therefore this Christian's heretical or something like that. But it's usually once you get, down to the the core basic doctrines jesus uh death for sins his resurrection his divine nature and so on you get to these once people once a group starts messing around with just basic doctrines that the bible lists as requirements for uh uh for correct belief and so on then yeah then you start looking and eh, not looking christian yeah yeah uh chat says hellfire will roast and toast them uh <laughs> That comes from a meme. They'll okay. be roasted and toasted. <laughs> How's the Figma said? So first you're late, and David doesn't hum in the intro. What is this? I'm sure R. By the way, <laughs> I'm leaving my future streams the uncomfortable huck. <laughs> That's good. How the uncomfortable huck is actually good. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be normal for women to have multiple husbands who submit to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, Muslim women believe in everything else in Islam, but push back on this and sex slavery. Uh, they just don't want to believe it, especially the women in my family. Mm. Yeah, people have been corrupted by the evil West uh, and have abandoned <laughs> Islamic values, unfortunately. That's why, yeah, people are now getting seduced by very, very terrible, very dangerous things like um, not being, not sharing your husband and stuff like that. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, I did not have sex with that woman. That's that's Bill Clinton that's imitating Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton imitating Muhammad, oh. Muhammad getting caught <laughs> with his sex slave. Oh, yes. That's good. That's good. That's good. As I always using this show to search for a new wife, it's like he's <laughs> testing the waters with these. Yeah. Women. <laughs> Yeah, he's just having all these women on to find out who. No, I'm totally cool with that. Oh, okay, come talk to me after the show. <laughs> uh, Robert Herring said, "Just sending love and support." Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, that's to me, not to you guys. Uh, the NATO said, "David, can you give some hadith? Lies is allowed." He must have said that before we, because we, we we quoted the one from Termidy where he yeah. said, Ly "Lying is accepted if it's uh, to make your wife happy." Yeah, yeah. I thought Islam is supposed to cure degeneracy. Yeah, sure Depends is. Yeah. That's why. Uh, Hassan Corney made a super chat and didn't say anything. I I appreciate it. Thank you very very much. Apologetics Dream Team. I don't think. You know what I'm doing here. I'm not. <laughs> uh, He's, like, undercover. He's undercover. He's undercover. Critter UT Intelligence said, uh, "Should we be congratulating IP on his debate with Daniel? Peace be upon him. Sh should we praise someone for defending kids when these things are so obvious?" LOL. Yes, we should. Yes. IP is a is a hero. Congratulations, you. IP. Congratulations. Well, I mean, it, remember he challenged me. He wanted to argue for it, and I was like, yeah. "All right." Yeah, what are you Do saying? It. What are you saying, Credo? That he should have backed down and said, "No, I won't debate that. I will not. Yeah. I will not defend children." What kind of man would not defend children? He is uh, obviously. If you see the the, the usual way that Daniel Kikuchu tweets about things or, or talks about things after an interaction with somebody, he's like very confident and mocking and all that. After his debate with you, he has gone into a full full. Uh, desperate angry meltdown mode and he's, yeah. he's he's very he's very desperate right now and uh trying to make all kinds of excuses and adding even more stupid arguments to his uh yeah. debate it's it's very it's very pathetic and it's amazing to see to be honest. i think he i look a lot watching his tweets in comparison to his prior debates he, i think he might know he didn't do that well and it shows and yeah and, and it's very that. it's very stupid that he actually i mean he should know who you are and the things that you believe in and 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 how you argue and he's the one who challenged you and then he did a horrible job so much that, that muslim apologists themselves came out and started uh trying to fix the narrative and i don't know man hey you, you, know, you know what you know it's uh you know it's interesting here like i've realized that uh, uh this is all connected but i, I i've realized that i don't 
I don't dislike Daniel as much as a lot of other people. And I was trying to figure out why, right? Because like, I mean, compared to- Because he's a psychopath and you are too. Well, no, I, I, I tried to figure it out and I finally figured out why I don't, like he doesn't annoy me as much as like an Ali Dawa or something like that. I was trying to, why Why is it? I mean, he he's, he's, he's putting forth views that are sometimes even worse than Ali Dawa's. So what, what, what's going on here? And I finally realized it. It's if you're going to be putting out these insane ideas and saying these horrible things, at least have some thick skin to not freak out when people criticize you. And if you look at like hijab and Ali Dawa and Sheikh Uthman and all these guys, they're all like saying these horrible things, but as soon as anyone criticizes them, especially their fellow Muslims, they lose their minds. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're, you're causing division in the Ummah by attacking. And they'll whine like babies. Whereas Daniel seems to be like, okay, I'm putting out all these horrible ideas that are, I mean, horrible to most people. Uh, but he doesn't he doesn't go into like crybaby mode as soon as anyone starts disagreeing with him. So mm -hmm. it's like that, that, that kind of thicker skin. But that's actually the problem here, right? Because if you look at it, Daniel's entire approach, it's, Okay, I'll put out this horrible idea. And then when people complain about it, I'll say, ah, but Christians have the same idea, even though we don't. But I'll, you know, I'll lie about, you know, we'll make up something about Isaac and Rebecca or whoever. It will make something up and we'll say, ha ha, you've got the entire, you've got the same problem. Not realizing, guys, who's better at dealing with criticism, uh, Christians or Muslims, right? Who loses their minds when someone, when someone like Muhammad is criticized? Uh, Muslims lose their minds and, and riot through the street. Not all Muslims, just to be clear, but uh, they seem to be very, very bad at dealing with criticism. So notice here, Daniel has a bit thicker skin. He can say a bunch of horrible mm -hmm. stuff and he can deal with the blowback, not realizing his community can't deal with the blowback, right? So he's thinking, mm -hmm. hey, uh, I'll defend pedophilia. And if you say pedophilia is wrong, I'll say, well, you guys support pedophilia too. You just don't know it. Ha ha. And all his followers, ha ha, they all support pedophilia because Rebecca was <laughs> Rebecca was three. No, she wasn't, but we can say it. Okay, so you guys are going to be shouting at Christians who are pretty good at dealing with criticism. And Christians, atheists, Hindus, everyone is going to be shouting back that your prophet's a pedophile. And you as a community do not deal with criticism well. Who wins that entire scenario? And he doesn't real and and he's starting to catch on. This is like bad. This is this is not something's wrong here. He doesn't realize what it is because he's actually fairly decent at accepting criticism. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't. It's just bad for the whole for the whole uh, the whole shebang. And he doesn't quite realize what's going on. Yep. 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 The one gamer said he really makes my Xbox chat look like a Bible pas pa uh, passage. Holy crap. He's talking, <laughs> there, talking about Muhammad Ajab's chat. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, do you think Momo was possessed or schizophrenic? One answer. One word uh, answer. It, 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 that, that is, we are not limited mm. to either or in that situation. We can yeah. say both. I could yeah. say mm. he had mental health problems and he was possessed. I uh, uh, AP wouldn't say that he's possessed because he's a dumb atheist who doesn't believe in demons. But yeah, uh, I don't believe in fairy tales, uh, so I would say that he was probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably say he was mentally ill. You see, uh, <laughs> uh, Zay XNT said, "I have a feeling that AP is a secretly is a secret Christian." You see. Secret secret what are you talking about um that one gamer said might be a little bit uh because tim is booked for the next uh, two months i believe but i'll definitely keep trying yeah. thank you appreciate it we'll see what happens yeah. yeah uh you think jewish fairy tale stories that made their way into the quran would be a pretty big red flag there god bless you all those are not really Christ, christian and jewish fairy tale stories right? and, no yeah. one no one denies that christians and later christians and jews made up all kinds of weird stories just yeah. the, the problem is for muslims they ended up in the quran yeah 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 some introverts said why are so many latinos converting to islam lately um there there was a there was a news out there that latinos have a higher conversion rate than others but uh, I, I don't think there is a significant development going yeah, and by, by the way there is a reason if you if you notice the dawah dawah is always looking for people who haven't caught on to their arguments so uh for for a while you know are you saying are you saying latinos are ignorant uh is as far as as far as the material here is you have to look at who started responding to it so for a while the you not ever uh, pretty much everyone in the united states everyone in europe was completely ignorant of islam and uh -huh. then muslim preachers were able to go in there and say pretty much whatever they wanted about islam and people would convert eventually people started started looking up 
looking up the sources and so on, which were available in English, very more difficult to find in Spanish. But uh, their major sources have been or have been around for a while in English, and that allowed people to expose the lies. But if you look at what da the Daes are doing, they're constantly looking for who, what group can we find that hasn't become completely familiar with. Uh, with with what our arguments are and what the problems with our arguments are, and they start focusing on on those groups. Notice they don't want to focus on people who are familiar with who who can expose their lies. As soon as they yeah. find as soon as they find out, hey, when we say Islam promotes this and you can refute it, it's not hey let's let's show you you're wrong. It's okay, let's put them aside and go find a different group who aren't familiar with these arguments we're using. And so. Yeah. Uh, that's going to that's going to that's going to keep happening like group by group around the world. They're going to keep going yeah. to new groups until those groups all learn uh, the problems with what they're being told. Yeah, this guy posted uh, a bunch of uh, the moon and stars, which just made me you see con convinced that Islam is true. I will not. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is what David Wood does. He says uh, we have to go. You are keeping us here forever, and then he gives a whole lecture, a whole preaching. About <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's still going. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. I'm, I'm reading this and then we're done. Some ideas like Daniels uh, are so absurd that no one should give it the intellectual courtesy, unlike dealing with others' ideas, which is why I appreciate AP's IP's no BS debate approach. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely, Thank you. absolutely. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, we will be here again. I think tomorrow we will be live on David Wood's channel. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And next week we will be here again. And from now on, IP should be joining us as a third guy whom we will keep here forever so that he will have no time. Oh, no. Openings again. Uh, yeah. And with all of that said, is there anything else? One word things that you want to add before we leave? Stay away from stay child. away from his well. Stay, stay away, away from it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say stay stay away from child brides and anyone who uh, <laughs> stay away from anyone who's who's uh, advocating marrying child brides or <laughs> and polygamy and polygamy Mormons so uh, or fundamentalist Mormons okay okay mm -hmm. not the mo not the modern one not the reformed new AP ones. AP once again always attacking Turkish people and Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> you are not like a Turkish Mormon. No. Uh, you <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic, wonderful day. And as always, I would like to leave you alone with a beautiful message coming from our dear friend, Sajid Lipham. Stay away from Islam. <laughs>